Welcome to the Independent Characters, episode 232. This is Carl. This is Josh. Yep, and that noise you hear in the background is Aria, my Siberian Husky. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, this edition, I think the uh, I think the kids are calling it the, a collab. But we have two very special guests on here. We have Campbell McLaughlin and Dan Boyd from, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Dan Boyd, professional and sound Rippin. engineer. <laughs> Griffin and Rippin. Mm, rip and Rip. That's right. That's from, us. From the 40K Badcast. How you guys doing? Oh, Carl. Doing just fine. It's a, it's yeah. a Friday. Uh, it's after, at least for me on the East Coast, it's after 8 p.m. Uh, my yeah. child is asleep, and I have a cold beer in front of me, and I'm talking to my friends on the internet. Could there be worse, go. pal. Could there be worse. <laughs> There you go. Uh, yeah, we've um, we've known each other several years now. I have not been to Campbell's house. Josh has. Uh, <laughs> I haven't been to Campbell's house. Not this but one. I, but I traveled across the Atlantic Ocean with Campbell, mm. which was cool. That's many, right. Many years ago. And uh, we've, we've met several times, Adepticon and, and Nova, and, uh, and we absolutely love you guys. So thank you so much for joining us. Well, course, Carl, we generally wouldn't be here without y'all yeah this your show is like the primogenitor for uh for our show and for a lot of people's you know hobby and interest and everything uh and i i remember when i got back into painting all the time i was listening yeah. to independent characters back episodes and i would write yeah. in a notepad uh <laughs> document where i left off in each show because i was shutting that computer off in between painting sessions and i had to I remember I thought you were going to say I was documenting a notepad how little hobby progress Carl was actually making. (laughs) (laughs) And how many times the Don had readjusted his room. (laughs) He did that a lot. (laughs) That guy loves to organize. But uh, we, you know, as Josh and I were talking about, we had had a Warrior Lodge episode coming up. And for those who don't know, the Warrior Lodge is kind of a moderated discussion. I will be the moderator for the first half. Josh will be the moderator for the second half of, of the discussion. Um, and we'll talk about several different points that have kind of been happening over the last few months within the 40K Games Workshop world. Um, and, you know, Josh and I were talking about, hey, who should we get on as guests? Should we pull in some listeners again? We really enjoy that a lot. And I don't remember which one of us was like, hey, what if we what if we got Dan and Campbell to come join us and, and both of us were like yeah that sounds really fun let's do it so here I'm, you guys are i know i know it's here a real are. get i'm glad your people could get in touch with our people and that's right through a it wasn't process. easy it yeah, wasn't a couple easy. Of contracts yeah. were signed yeah we had to we we told henry cavill listen we gotta bump you we gotta bump you we got dan and campbell coming well, you I'll know, tell you. I'll tell you. Off Hit the bricks, years Hank. When we actually deliver some product. I, I do think this does count as you getting some listeners on the show because I've been tuning in to all your recent uh, podcasts, oh, especially you. on YouTube. Uh, so I think that still counts. I think we're still listeners, aren't we, Campbell? Yeah, I'd say active, active awesome. and past listeners. I mean, I remember the first time Dan and I met. We were we were talking about the show for a little bit because before you and I even talked about doing our own podcast, and Dan's like. I've never, had, I've never had anyone to talk to about this. I didn't know anyone else who cared about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> all, all joking aside, you know one thing that's really bugging me lately I've been noticing, especially as I've been spending a lot of time on YouTube since I'm unemployed right now, mm-hmm. is people using Henry Cavill's likeness in thumbnails when they're talking about anything Ooh. related to Adeptus Custodians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, that's... oh, it, it, this is Henry Cavill's dream army. Is it? Is it? I mean, like, I'm pretty sure the guy could speak for himself if he wanted to. It's so, it's so clickbaity. I hate it. He has not block. signed off on any of that. Yeah, he doesn't need to speak for himself. He has a department to speak for him. <laughs> My favorite are the people who are like, uh, I challenge Henry Cavill to a game, and I'll donate the proceeds in the video to a charity of his choice. And it's good luck like, with that. On. Yeah, good luck have, with have that. fun. Have fun. You know, I, I was, I was just thinking about this. Henry Cavill, he just can't, he can't just go to the game store and no. get a game. No. Like he can't no. just like roll up to the local. That's why I'd like to issue a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm you saying, put it here, folks. I'm, I'm saying like like you know I'm I, I'm gonna say this and you guys are gonna groan, but I feel a little bad for the guy because no. I'm sure that he just like when he's like not 
filming and he's not with his family or something. He's got free time or whatever. He probably just wants to get games in just like the rest of us mm-hmm, do. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah. like, unless, unless his like friends that know him and are probably under an NDA are like available, it's not like he can just go get a pickup game somewhere. And that, you know, I, I kind of feel bad for the guy for that. I feel like yeah, if you're that it, famous, you can kind of like Cyrano your way into playing in a tournament, you know, like get a little uh, headphone in somebody's ear, just like watch from afar. And just you know, it's, it's, um, or Ratatouille, it, I guess. I, I, <laughs> Sized Ratatouille. I am under no illusions that any of us are famous. However, we are fairly well known in a small niche community. And uh at adepticon there have been times where i'm like people are i was trying to talk to my wife on the phone and i'm walking across the tournament hall and people are stopping me every 20 feet just to say hi which i love don't get me wrong but there's times where i go up to my room because i'm like i just need a a breather need some time to be alone and it's just that small inkling of of attention like that that makes me go how does somebody like Britney Spears or Henry Cavill or anybody famous deal with this. Like it's gotta be, especially when you care about somebody having a good experience meeting you. Right. It's a lifestyle at that point. Like it just takes over. Yeah. I was going to say Henry Cavill's got to be the ultimate garage gamer. Right. And like he's only playing at his house and yeah, (laughs) I'm sure he's not playing in a garage. He's I'm sure he's got a great space. (laughs) I would imagine. I would, I hope for, for, for his sake he does, but still it's, you know, there's there's something wonderful about just going out and meeting other hobbyists and without and a doubt, and yeah. like seeing what people have in common and you know what kind of games they're playing and and I'm sure he is living a rich and fulfilling life. That Henry Cavill, I'm sure he is. <laughs> but one of the one of the things that this hobby, one of the reasons why it means so much to me, is the fact that. You know, I have so many friends in the hobby over, mm-hmm. you know, made throughout the years and uh, that there is an icebreaker between me and other hobbyists. And I can we immediately have common ground and I can just go out and, you know, chat with people and have fun. Uh, this has been so many times like at Adepticon specifically where you're just sitting at the bar waiting for your other friends to show up and you strike up a conversation with the fella uh, or the person next to you. And uh, it's, you know, you're, you're instant friends. Right. Yeah. And yeah. poor, Agreed. poor Henry, poor Hank. You know, he ain't doing that. Only his friends call him. Right. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No, it's got to be tough. All right. Well, listen, let's get this show back on track because we got we got some uh, things we want to talk about. We got some checklists we got to check off here. So uh, let's launch. uh, First off, I'd like to say uh, this show is sponsored by two of our patreon subscribers our patrons uh cory trickler and cliff wood uh thank you so much guys for uh helping support the show we really really appreciate it yeah special uh, shout out to uh cliff being a local friend of ours happens so to thanks, be local <laughs> happens to be yeah. local i randomly draw the names from the I feel like i feel like the fix might hat. be in here carl <laughs> I, I picked another local for my elite choice. So let's launch right into elite choice. I intentionally wow. didn't pick the person I knew for my elite choice. Wow. Some West Coast This episode bias. brought to you by nepotism. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Nepo babies. It's about <laughs> ethics and wargaming podcasting. So listen, but here's, here's, here's my uh, elite choice is, is Bryce Kingman and his new Tyranids. Now we have known Bryce for years. Uh, we were introduced to Bryce uh, through Justin who was friends with with Bryce, and he's gamed with us off and on for for several years. But the time and attention he is taking on these yellow Tyranids with all the spots on them, and I mean, this is is a bit of attention, and it would drive me, I think, a little nuts painting this army, but it looks really fantastic. So uh, he and I are trying to get a team game against you, Josh, and Aaron, for, for Aaron to help prep for a Adepticon team tournament, but um, I think we're both going to be playing our Tyranids, and his are going to look so much better than mine. I've seen a lot of the <laughs> leopard print Tyranid uh, scheme before, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I've rarely seen it done this well. This is a really, really cool project. So kudos to you, Bryce. Yeah, yeah, Bryce, very talented painter, and definitely yes. putting the the labor of love in here, and the attention to detail, and just you know taking the time of highlighting all those plates and getting all the uh, the spots and dots, and yeah, it's it's really well done. Great job, Bryce. Yeah, great color choices too. Having something be that legible 
while having so many yellows and tans and colors very close to each other and those patterns on top is a real challenge so yeah fantastic work bryce is by the way the progenitor to use that word again i like it <clears throat> i'll latch onto it of the uh oh i'm hand i'm free handing this yeah it's just a couple triangles and <laughs> And is that where is that who that comes from that's who it comes from wow. he, he, he actually painted here. he painted a, a model for us for me one time just because he was screwing around and he painted the icy's logo on the shoulder of the model <laughs> and i'm just like i hate you so gross much, <laughs> disgusting I hate you so much so anyway that was my choice uh what about you josh yeah, so with uh, Lance Bench Press, which is uh, from our Discord, um, and he posted a bunch of photos from the Nemo 2024 meetup, and this is the New England Mordheim Open, um, and this was just a, a, a packed event. I had no idea this happened, but it's like, it's been mentioned multiple times to me. Dave mentioned it on the show that we uh, were just on with him too, Dave Taylor. Um but it's it's a huge gathering of players playing Mordheim, and I haven't seen a group of people playing Mordheim like this in 25 plus years at this rate. Uh, and just the fact that so many people are coming together, keeping the rule set alive. I know the community has really done a lot to carry this game, uh, but just seeing this much enthusiasm, uh, amazing terrain, 3D terrain, 3D boards, uh, tons of detail. You get caves, you got mine cars, you got little wooden bridges, all the things, some great, great... Um, painted war bands and just a, a bunch of warp stone and things like that. And seeing uh, the community, a keeping this game alive for so long, but then also rallying at huge events like this was just really cool I was uh, for me say, to see. Josh, Absolutely. I feel like the community is doing not a lot to keep this game alive. I feel like the community All is doing <laughs> everything to keep this game they alive. They are 100% carrying this game. Yes, absolutely. Uh, for now, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, it just it, for me, it was really neat to see this many people uh, just kind of celebrating this game that has been out of production for easily 20 years, maybe 25 even. Um, so, yep, that was uh, just a, a really neat shout out and love the... Uh, the smoldering, smoky, smoky beer there and <laughs> you guys, frothy mugs of uh, beverage. You guys ever play more time? I have not. I, yeah. I, yeah, I played when it was actually in production still. So so I have not. But uh, back when in-game Oakland was still a game store up in up in Oakland. Uh, a group of guys had gotten together and they were playing through a Mordheim campaign and they had this amazing terrain that they had made and, and everything. That was kind of my first time seeing it in person. I, I knew about it, but it was like my, my first time seeing it. And th their campaign was already like nearing, it was like three quarters of the way through when I came across this and I was like, oh my God, I so want to play this. Like, and I've, I've, you know, we've never picked it up just because we got a hundred other things going on. But if they do re-release it, I'm, I'm totally going to do it like without a doubt. Yep. Without yeah, I remember doubt. in like, I want to say like 2006 or 2005, somewhere in there, I ran a campaign at the local GW for Mordheim. Uh, and this was even after the, the they yeah. had finished running that game. Uh, you know, they weren't putting anything new out for yeah. it. And uh, I just remember having so much fun with that. Uh, I also remember hating elves because elf <laughs> BS definitely was alive and well in Mordheim. But great game. It's like Necromunda, but with swords. Yeah. And who who doesn't love that? What is it with them and elves? Because in Battlefleet Gothic, it's the Eldar. Every right. single right? Game. It's every Elf every BS one. lives. The, well, the, yep. the, the funny thing is, it's uh, in this la latest version of Blood Bowl, Elf BS is, I mean, it definitely lives, don't get me wrong, but it's it's not nearly at the level of the other uh, Games That's Workshop games. Uh, where, where, where in, in Blood Bowl right now, it's Skaven BS is currently at the top of the heap. Uh, nice. So, and, and this is coming from a, an elf player when it comes to Blood Bowl. Oh, I see. Uh, so, <laughs> listen, hey, I got it. I, you, you know, I, I get rocked by elves in every other game system. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to try it in this one game. And it turns out it's the one game where they're not automatically the best. <laughs> who would have Still pretty good. <laughs> Campbell, who did, you, who did you pick out for your uh, warrior, uh, for your uh, elite choice? <laughs> I've picked Jason Dyer's Winged Hussars. They yep. are rough riders. Some I don't know what models they're a proxy from, but they I do. are. Oh, I do. Who makes them? They are from Victoria Miniatures, and it was part of I I want to say a Kickstarter, and you could get the actual miniatures or you could get the STL files. And I think Jason printed these out because I was looking at these as well on our on our group. They're amazing. Awesome. 
No, Victoria Miniatures has reliably been one of the few third-party manufacturers who make stuff that really does kind of get the GW aesthetic pretty well. Uh, since yeah. Victoria Lamb has been doing heavy uh, Golden Demon stuff for a bajillion years. But yeah. this squad really caught my attention because Historicals in Space is so right up my alley. Uh, I was going to talk for a second about more time back there because my first time playing it was at Historicon in like 1999. Nice. It was my first time holding a plastic model that wasn't an army man because I was used to playing with red Napoleonics. But these guys were right up my alley because they've got, they're drawing from history extremely heavily or rather at least the myth of the Wing Tassar history. But I love the natural variation he's going for. The style of the models altogether is very naturalistic. And I love just the variety of coat colors, coat patterns, and feather colors and feather patterns. It makes them look very organic and real, but their uniforms are nice uniforms, so it ties them all together really nicely. I feel like the only thing that could be more up my alley would be if they had some banners with some iconography or heraldry or what have you, but these guys are great. I've loved Rough Riders for the entire time I've been playing Warhammer, and I'm glad other people have kind of jumped in to make alternatives to them, and these Victoria Miniatures ones that Jason painted are fantastic. Coming from a, a historicals gamer, that's pretty high praise, by the way. I mean, again, it's historicals gaming. I'm, I'm not a rivet counter. I'm not like, yeah. not like that's the incorrect <laughs> shade of field blue for 1783 and, you know, Virginia or whatever. But the idea of it, the imagery of it is there. And Jason did a great yeah. job with it. Yeah. No, they look fantastic. They absolutely, absolutely. I, I, did, I saw this on our group as well. That's how I knew. I was like, oh, yeah, they're because I read the whole thread about them. I was like, oh, this is really fascinating. So what about you, Dan? What did you pick? Okay, well, I'm a little bit cheating with this. No, you're not. So, so, it's fine. so bear with me. This is, a, this is a collab edition. Dan. So <laughs> I have chosen Badcast Discord user Dynamic Calories, their version of the very new Mortark in AOS Ushoran. Uh, and uh, before y'all independent characters listeners start getting up at me, you can see this model on Warhammer Community because Dynamic Calories happens to be Luke from the painting team uh, over at Games Workshop. And so you've probably all seen this model already. Uh, it's over there at Warcom, and it is a truly beautiful interpretation of Usho Ron. Uh, I, th I think that this knocks the box art paint job right out of the ring. Like it's, it's wild, the colors, the blends, the beautiful uh, brass and verdigris, uh, just, I, I was stunned, absolutely stunned by this model when uh, he posted it in the Badcast Discord. And then to see it on Warcom, I was like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that so, makes sense. So <laughs> yeah, uh, this, Worthy. I, I mean, Usharan is such an, a, a, a unique and cool model the likes of which we don't see a ton of in AOS where he's hunched and sort of uh, collapsed in on himself as opposed to like standing with like 20 foot wings yeah. or some, yeah, some yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, this paint job is just unbelievable to me. Uh, so Luke, good on you. Great yeah. job. Yeah, I can amazing. hear the Bloodborne boss music just ramping up the second <laughs> I look at this. It's so, so it's a, It's good. a fantastic model. I mean, just from the base, you know, starting it at it, from its base it's a, it's a fantastic model and then yeah. seeing a paint job like this on it geez. yeah for it's, how it's like horrible. hunched and kind of crowded it is in and of itself it has so much presence at the same time and absolutely that attention to detail on the face and how much it just brings you right into the middle of that model and then you kind of work your way out it's gorgeous i think the, the face kind of scares me so the face should scare you the basing is <laughs> yeah. something that also really it feels subtle in comparison just how big this thing is but just the color variations in the rock there the reds so and the blues because like real yeah. rocks aren't just gray they aren't just tan they've got a lot of color variation and fixing in that sort of stuff in there ties it together with the base model while not my rocks are <laughs> yeah i was about to say sir, mine are <laughs> no but yeah i 100 what a great what a great call out dan i mean just yeah. what a model what if a you're model. gonna cheat cheat well dan that's, that's what they say, right? That's what's in the books. That's not cheating at all. Okay, so on that note of not cheating, we're going to take a short break. We're going to come back, and then we're going to launch into uh, Workbench, Hobby Progress, and, and all that good stuff uh, before we launch into the meat of the show. So we will be right back. All right, and we're back. 
Uh, again, we're here with Dan and Campbell. Uh, we're going to go quickly through our, our hobby progress and what we've been up to. Um, Josh, you want to start? Yeah, I'll kick it off. Um, yep, so I've just been uh, continuing the Legions Imperialis train. Uh, I'm working on the next batch of that. I've got uh, three tanks almost done, nine more in progress just shortly behind that. Uh, this is what I was working on on our uh, experimental live stream we did uh, last <laughs> week the other day. Um, yeah, so I uh, got a bunch of the next batch of tanks coming. I've finished all the candy red, all the clear cut red, the Tamiya red on all the infantry. So I've got about 60 more tactical Marines busting out there, and that should complete everything i need for that force for a good while that'll keep me out of trouble for a bit uh depticon list is already done this will be like the stretch goal for the 3000 point option and then some so i'll have lots of uh, lots of options to go with there um painting up the order tokens i printed up another batch of the order mm -hmm. tokens because again in the last episode jody and i were complaining about kind of the super thin i can't even call it card stock heavyweight paper that the tokens are in that box set um so uh, took took some files into Blender and actually combined them and doing prints of those just to get some beefier resin tokens. I've got the Thousand Suns icon on one side and then the actual order that's being assigned to the unit on the other nice. side. Yep. Um, so yeah, nice double-sided resin tokens there. Um, so those are painting in progress. And then uh, just dialing in my uh, Adepticons doubles list that me and Cheyenne are taking uh, with the um, data slate update that they dropped just a couple of days ago there with points locked in for the next three months or whatever, however long it's going to be. Uh, we could uh, finally finalize our lists and looks like we're, well, uh, again, we both play Marines, Necrons and Eldar. So we uh, had, had some options on what we wanted to do if we wanted to mix and match. My idea was uh, he plays blood angels and I have Necrons. So it's like, Oh, we could do the, uh, the bro, like uh, the fist ally <laughs> necrons and uh, blood angels alliance there um but it looks like we're both bringing necrons so gonna start playing with some lists there and having fun with it monoliths cool. monoliths everywhere josh i have a question for you <laughs> yeah so uh, the scuttlebutt that i've heard now i haven't worked on these yet but the scuttlebutt that i've heard is that working on some of the legions imperialist tanks can be uh in the assembly stage can be kind of a bear uh, uh specifically I've got a report here that each rhino <laughs> is in eight pieces, uh, and I wanted to I wanted to hear uh, what what you, uh, somebody who's you know dived in head first into Legions Imperialis, has to say about that process. Yeah, um, compared to the old epic rhinos that were a single piece and hollow <laughs> on the bottom side, these are they are I think eight pieces is correct. Uh, four of those pieces are the, the smokestacks, the exhaust on those. So there are some tiny parts on those and that wait, like the, the little parts the that stick up above the hull yeah. on, or on, like on, on the, the side of the demo yeah. pattern. It's, okay, it's the, the entire side. exhaust, yeah. at least not just okay. the, the teeny, I thought it was tops, like just the yeah. top. <laughs> yeah. That would have just the top. Oh, <laughs> It is the uh, yeah. So the entire smokestack with exhaust is are are a single piece each. So there are four of those, but then it's two sides, top and bottom. Um, they they go together really well. Super well. Um, yeah. The they're incredibly easy to clean. Like they're really smart on how they attach them to the frames. So your like sprue clipping is super minimal. You, once you clean that up, you like you don't have to scrape any mold lines off it because it's all hidden on the sides where yeah. it's being assembled so they they are very smart on how they've gone about it um they, they, some fiddly parts on tanks just being tiny tiny guns or smokestacks things like that the um you need tweezers the, you need tweezers the, when you're assembling them okay the, the kratos tank has like all the all the <clears> stacks are on the, the back of that uh the back of the tank and they i think I think all in, four of them slot in as a single piece, but they're, okay. but it like, but is a separate piece from the back of the tank. So yes. there, there, there's some small fiddly pieces, but uh, overall nothing that anybody with a, a small amount of hobby experience wouldn't be able to handle. It's not that bad. It's not. Yeah. So it's, I've, it's I've not. glued the cigar and the Goliath boss before, but yeah, I only exactly. had to do the example one of those. We've used. I only had to do yeah. one of those. Yeah similar size yeah so there's there's absolutely some tiny parts but it's not that advanced of a model kit that somebody wouldn't be comfortable just jumping they, into them they are not as tiny as that cigar okay okay the, the low bar to clear stacks. but still yeah yeah that one was rough yeah. uh, <clears throat> uh dan what do you let's skip to you what have you been working on lately 
Okay, so I've been doing a lot of Blood Bowl star players lately. I had a couple that I did for my brother for Christmas, for a Christmas present. Uh, and I have since then been working on some for myself, for my own collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've finished uh, Kirith Crack and I. Uh, who's a dark elf star player. Uh, I was very happy with that model, that paint job. Uh, I finished up wither grasp, double drool. Who's like a two headed tentacled uh, beast man uh, who for my brother and Max spleen ripper, the chainsaw wielding chaos warrior. Uh, and I, then just recently I finished ripper Bolgrot, the smart troll uh, who uh, is, I'm so thrilled with this paint job and this model that I'm, I think I'm going to enter it in capital palette. Wow. at nova this year uh i had a ton of fun painting it and i think it came out great uh and uh, uh you know i i think it can stand up for itself and maybe uh somebody would look at it and say huh that's a good work over there uh but right now i'm working on i'm almost done with varog ghoul chewer who's an orc star player and uh, i just finished uh the other uh in the last session i just finished his pants uh, and almost finished the ghoul that is impaled upon his shoulder spike. Uh, and I will be finishing, Thanks. hopefully, if I'm not too tired after this recording, finishing that guy up, uh, or at least that part of that guy up tonight. Uh, but I'm very close there. And after that, I've made some plans here. So after I've got to start working on a Song of Ice and Fire miniatures game, miniatures, uh, for mm-hmm. Adepticon, since I'm playing in a couple events there. And I would like to be fully painted. I don't think I will. Like, I don't think I have the sauce to get all my stuff done for that event. Uh, but I want to get as close as possible. Is and- it is it, uh, is it not uncommon in the Song of Ice and Fire events that things are not fully painted? Or is everybody Last- bringing... Last year at Adepticon, I had unpainted stuff. I'm ashamed to say, but it's did, not, did it's, other folks? Or yes, I mean, like, yes, I wasn't the only one. Yes, yeah. So I mean, it's not like okay. Yeah, I, I mean, these were casual events. Uh, the event that I played <laughs> in last year was a casual event, and the event that I played in at Nova was also a casual event. So it, you know, it wasn't a big deal, and I don't think yeah, it was expected yeah. for people to have fully painted right. stuff. Uh, and uh, uh, we call it we call it soy. Because it's yeah. the acronym is can be spelled out a soyaf so soy, yeah. <laughs> uh, so soy is not my main game to at all, uh, and I'm I'm enjoying it a whole lot. I, as as far as games go, I think it's one of the best designed tabletop games out there. It's a ton of fun to play, and uh, I w- would like for it to get more popular so more people are playing it. But it's not my main, and uh, I, you know I'll I'll assign time to it when I can, basically. Yeah. But I've been using contrast paints a lot with that. Uh, so they do paint up really quickly. I can paint uh, the characters up in about like two hours each, which is really fun to do. And you feel like a yeah. uh, you feel like a machine, some sort of yeah. painting machine when you f- finish a bunch of those in a in a in sequence. Are you doing that like slap chop style and um, or just straight contrast over the? I never really understood phone. what people were talking about when they said slap chop. If I'm going to be honest, uh, mm-hmm. so if you would care to define that I'll, maybe i could tell. I'll walk you through it after the show we've talked about it a lot okay it's, it's uh, wash and dry brush with a brand name yeah that's okay. it okay. that's yeah. exactly dry what brush it is. would yeah that's yeah i've coat. i've been painting uh I'm priming gray with the mechanicus standard gray primer from g-dubs and uh, dry brushing white and then yeah, using yeah, the con- and then working up i guess some, some of the contrast you need to have like the skin color down mm-hmm. so yeah. i will so do you that paint in white there and then yeah yeah so that that's that's really it so if that's slap shop <laughs> then that's what i'm doing yeah, but, that's pretty much it uh yeah it's it's easy it's fun so i got yeah. i, I want to do a bunch of that until adepticon and then after that i uh am getting back on the bird bro train because uh, I would like to finish a bunch of stuff up for Nova Open on Labor Day weekend. And I've got two Land Raiders, two characters, the Biologist and the Judiciar, and the Storm Speeder and a Ballistus to do for that. So quite a bit. Nice. But I think April to September is a doable time frame for that. So nice. hopefully I'll be able to field the army I want to field at Nova. Nice. Nice. All nice. Right. What about you, Campbell? 
Uh, so I'm what also working on uh, Black Power Armor. Uh, so the, <laughs> I'm working on Black Templars right now. I just wrapped up my second squad of 10 Crusaders. I painted the first one like when the squad came out in like 2021. So I was like, oh, God, it's been three years since I painted these freaking things. Uh, but these guys were a load of fun. I got to really mess around using the upgrade sprues, which I didn't use on the first go around. So I got to get yeah. a lot more character. And my painting has changed in so many like little subtle ways in the last couple of years that I'll notice, but no one else will uh, like how I do cloth and how I do skin and so on. And I got to apply that to these models and I had a grand old time working through them. I remember painting through them the first time I was like, these guys are a bit much to batch paint all 10 at once. But this time I was just grooving. I was vibing. I was having a great time start to finish. They look this amazing. Group. Nice. They look yeah. There's amazing. a lot going on in that unit. So I can I could see that being a chore for five, but it looks incredible. Now, Campbell, I, 10, I can't, I, I can't help but notice this is a 10 man unit, but that's not the limit on crusader squads no it's not is it 20 is it 20 yeah yeah you can have 20 Jeez. of these himbos running around and then you can add grimaldas to them for a 24 man just party pack yeah no <laughs> hit me with all the blast weapons your army please but part of my ongoing goal for my black templars is to be able to do uh what i call the Hellbrick, which is high martial Hellbrick, a lieutenant and 10 of these guys in the land raider the heck brick which is 10 of these guys a lieutenant and a captain with sigismund seal for the five up crits in another land raider and potentially a third bigger brick which i'm yet to name of 20 of them with grimaldus on foot to screen and or just run up there it is going all in on the dumbest thing in the world but they're cheap they're so fun to paint and run they every time you attack with them my opponents will always go you have how many dice because each of these <laughs> yeah, idiots has, if they have five attacks per guy like that's wild. assault that's intercessors crazy. don't have that that's fully wild yeah. yeah so i'm like here comes 45 dice the the hellbrick has killed everything i've thrown it at to except for a hecaton land fortress with void armor so like Jeez, up to including crazy. big big knights and it's just infantry chain swords with uh that's with enough of the right buffs i mean going on there. i mean hellbrick does do a lot of the work there with his like damage four ap4 sword dan it's damage three don't ap4 is it AP four really? I think it's AP four. It might be AP three. Oh my god! I think it's like yeah. I think it's like AP three strike at like strength nine. He's or whatever. wild. He is yeah, fully. He, he's he's a fully guy. wild character. A lot of people. A lot of people are sleeping on High Marshal Hellbrick. Hey, I got a question for you, Campbell. Shoot. Where does the Emperor's Champion fit into all this? The problem is he can't join a unit that somebody else is already with. And he doesn't offer any buffs to a unit. Mm. So would I rather have one dude who? can really beat up some character models character units or whatever in a squad or would i rather give my 50 chainsword attacks lethal hits okay i have no i have, have a solution for you though actually okay okay i i, I do have a solution and it's called sword brethren mm -hmm. in an impulsor mm -hmm. with the emperor's champion in addition to your various bricks that would be in the list i'm running this week at my next game not to get ahead of myself i'm just five points short <laughs> Oh, I, listen, pal. I mean, it sounds like you have everything you need to make the most thematic Black <laughs> Templars list in existence. Yeah, no, my, my yeah. backlog closet is terrifying, and I do have a lot of these guys, these guys painted too. Yeah, uh, so these guys are just the latest addition to this army. I I've got ten more of Crusaders in my closet. I'm yet to get to, but right now I'm working on a Gladiator because these things are money. They are priced to move. They are so cool. I'm so glad their rules are as good as the model now. So I'm finally getting around to the gladiator that our listener Ken gave me at Nova uh, only a nice. few months late. Uh, what, so, uh, what, yeah. what type? Uh, Lancer. Of course. Yeah. yeah. The good, the good one. The yeah. good one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I painted, I painted that for Nova uh, and it drove me, I would say moderately crazy because it's got a lot of edges on there. It is not mm -hmm. like a predator, which is let's just say sparse on detail the the newer space marine kits have all sorts of nooks and crannies yeah. on them so yeah. uh, great model though Fan looks they those things look fantastic on the table they're so cool i i've painted a rep x i can paint a gladiator <laughs> <laughs> and i had to paint that rep x three times because my primer went hydrophobic Oof. on me and oh. everything had to be like i, I had remember. to paint my black tank black three times i remember so how it incredibly black. incensed you were each time yeah, yeah, it's, it's not an Astraeus. No. <laughs> it's not an Astraeus. I'm not doing that to myself. I've got one of those. That <laughs> yes, thing did. Know. That thing. I heard did about the edge highlight. Oh, I know. I, heard, I don't know. I, I don't. More. 
Listen, I don't know what episode uh, that is. Campbell Maybe might know it off the off the top of his head, but it's there's a bad cast episode out there where where you can hear me go insane in real time as I'm explaining painting the Astraeus. It weighs seven pounds, and I'm not joking about that. You spent more time edge highlighting that Astraeus than Adon spent reorganizing his. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, bro. I don't know about all that. <laughs> I remember, I remember distinctly you talking about how you had to hold it in like this weird position and like mm-hmm. you would be cradling it while you were trying to, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like you're it's holding, crazy. you're holding a baby kind of like while you're trying to paint, paint it because varnish, again, paint and varnish. So you're not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stuff every, off, yeah. every corner, every edge of that thing, because it's like I said, it's seven pounds, crazy. right? Yeah. So that's you huge. can't, you can't just, you can't just like hold it like you can a regular plastic model which weighs next to nothing right yeah you have to actually grip the thing to hold it was yep. y'all i'm having flashbacks <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> all right well uh for <laughs> myself i uh have pretty much wrapped up my uh squad of 10 black legion uh uh chaos space marines um i did spend a whole bunch of time uh, putting on decals over the last two days. Um, and I've always been somebody who's not particularly confident with the decal work, but I found a tutorial online on YouTube that um, now Colin had sat with me and walked me through how he did decals uh, a couple years ago, more, more than a couple. And I'd kind of lost that information. I did find a tutorial on YouTube that I'll link in the show notes and uh it kind of gave me the confidence to give it a try. And uh, sure enough, I'm super happy with the way these things came out. Did you guys know? You guys probably already knew this. Microsol and uh, Microset, which everybody knows you use for uh, decals. I could never remember which, in which order, everybody holds up their, theirs. Okay. I could never remember which order you were supposed to use them in. Did you know there's a number in the upper left corner that says MI1 and MI2? <laughs> So there is. You no, know I can't read. I, yeah. <laughs> that is the order you use them in. I so set, I will set, set and, solve. and solve. Yeah, that, yeah. that's the thing. I but was... I mean, if you think about it, it sounds like set would be like you're setting it. Like that. You're, would yeah, be you're, that. you're setting it on the model. Yeah, like you set yeah. a table. I see that as like setting it in its final position. Final. Right? And it is, yeah. but I, I, I don't know. I always feel like that was like. The, and then you the second. It up for that anyway, there's numbers in the upper left corner <laughs> I in case I get confused again. I think the, the Carl Tuttle Microsol party is a party of one on this one. It <laughs> may be. It may be. It very well you know, may be. It, it, you know I, what? I'm Doesn't actually lie? with you, Carl. So thank you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You know, see, Josh good. and I agree. <laughs> that's a little. That's a little bit, bit of podcast solidarity right there. Is there what you I'm go. Talking about. Uh, I so I, I did. Uh, I started off just testing on one guy, and then I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a couple more guys. And next thing you know, I'd done all of them. So that was fantastic. And then I was like, what else can I do? You know what? I wasn't going to do decals on these uh, Legions Imperialis Sons of Horus tanks, but I am now. <laughs> and so I did <laughs> all the Legion yeah. Imperialis tanks that yeah, I had with decals. They look so good with them. Yeah, awesome, It looks dude. so good. It looks so good. It's, I do wish yeah. I'd had the uh, Forge World Sons of Horus sheet. I think that would look even cooler, but we'll we'll move on with what we've got for the moment. Uh, yeah, I, I've been mixing in the Thousand Suns <clears throat> Forge World sheet with my yeah. um, the stuff that actually came with Legions Imperials at that scale. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's been nice to have some full color options, but most of the full color are so much larger because they're made for twenty eight millimeter. Are those scale. sheets yeah. so still in stock? Not I mean, really. They, this one probably they, they go in and out of stock. Ago. I think yeah, I have some I, Thousand Suns one because I used them on my Thousand Suns for a while. Well, for a me. while, when I was uh, when Forge World existed, whenever I would make an order, I'd add a Raven Guard, uh, yeah, uh, sheet. decal sheet into okay. the order uh, uh, to go along with it. I have like seven or eight now, which is great because you know my Raven Guard army is probably never going to be done, uh, but. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like that's something uh, that is definitely missing from current 40k, at least. Uh, yeah. Where you don't, you know, the the decals they give you are in the boxes are fine. They're good quality. They're great quality decals. But that know. was the point I was going to make. Dan is they've gotten like the quality of those have gotten better. Yeah, they also yeah. come what they used so to fast too. They come they come off really smooth. Um, they're they're finer quality, like looking. Um, it's interesting. The black Legion went away from like the yellow chaos symbols to all gold now, which matches up of course, perfectly with, you know, the gold I used on, on my guys. And, um, last but not least, I've been working on, uh, 
a couple war dogs here. Mm. Um, and since I'm on kind of a roll on my Black Legion stuff and I'm highly motivated, I'm going to get these guys done, which are part of my 2000 point list. And um, are these 40K war dogs? Just time for yeah, a hold, hold it up again. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was, I was looking at the site looking for transfers. Nope. Hey, there he Ooh, <laughs> spicy. You got decals in those too. Come, coming along pretty good. Uh, yeah, and that's what I was going to say. I'm going to put a bunch of decals all over these guys too now that I'm – now that I'm down with the uh, sickness on uh, the old uh, wow. Microsoft and Michael said. <laughs> uh, so you <laughs> can, right. it looks right now, as of as of this recording right now, you can buy Sons of Horus Legion transfer sheet and the Space Wolves Legion transfer sheet on the GW right. web store. And if you want Carl right. well, to be able to afford buy these, go to patreon.com slash the independent characters podcast. <laughs> I'm going to buy them right now before... <laughs> We publish this so that they're there. <laughs> <laughs> and also, and, the, and the, so that nobody else can get them. By the time you're listening to this, they're sold out. <laughs> yeah, probably <laughs> not. Bought them but, all. <laughs> yeah. If you'd like some, join the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, so I mean, that's me. I feel like I'm finally making some progress on these uh, Black Legion. As I was looking at my list, I actually rock uh, three five-man squads of actual Chaos Space Marines, including... T- then terminators as well uh and so um i've got 10 of them done i'm working on the next uh the next uh five right now um and then the other thing i'm doing i'm trying out a new i found a new um tutorial on uh, plasma weapons which mm-hmm. involves using some um some other uh like paint uh, what's his name uh mig uh, paint studios some, some st- mm-hmm. stuff from him so i ordered a little thing from him for it and um and give that a try on all my plasma weapons as well nice cool yeah. awesome yeah. yeah you've been on a good roll man you're in danger of actually finishing this army and uh, i want to get it i want to get the two thousand points up and running so i can start playing with it so yeah, yeah. i'm awesome. moving forward yeah That's a great i'm moving goal. forward quickly yeah Love so it. the war dogs after the war dogs i've got uh obliterators how many hell drakes are we talking here none no, no you don't want to. You don't want to pay any more hell drakes. No hell drakes, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Although, flashbacks. You know, yeah, I'm using I'm using uh, scale color uh, for my golds and stuff, the AK mm-hmm. stuff, and it covers so so nicely. Like it would. Oh, good. Be an issue. Yeah. yeah. I'm just yeah, curious. So how much of your old metallics? How much of your old Black Legion is still like in rotation? I tossed it all. Like I tossed. Okay. Because like I literally popped them off all their bases. Mm-hmm. Those bases are being used by Shell for her Night Lords, uh, of which now, hey, I can put decals on her Night Lords. Uh, oh, yeah. And and um, and, and the, the 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 models are just so inferior to the new mm. Chaos Space Marine models. Mm-hmm. It, it was I look at them and I'm like, oh god, they're awful looking. And I had done like a lot of customized work on them, but in comparison, there's just no comparison. That's kind yeah, of the new I've... Chaos Marines. Yeah, those new night lords. Y'all see those new night lords? You probably oh, talked about them. God, like, like, yeah. We talked about it with with uh, Dave and and Jake. Yeah, and get Jason. out of here. Those they're things. Baller. Those things are amazing. And, and I am a I am a known night lords hater, and still those models are fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you gotta yeah. hand it to them. All right. Let's yeah. talk games played real quick. This can go pretty quick for me. Uh, I got nothing played in the last week and a half since we recorded, but we are playing tomorrow. So. Ooh. Uh, Aaron, Aaron, nice. and myself are playing tomorrow. Yeah. Um, what are you? What are you taking? I'm rocking. For... I'm rock. You know what? He's he's bringing gray knights. He's trying to. He hasn't played a lot of tenth, Uh-oh. so he's he's bringing his gray knights. And I was like, you know, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to bring demons. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So it's super super thematic. Gotta have a nice so. theme game. Yep. Nice. Well, nice. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll we'll work through that. So that's it. That's all. I haven't mostly I've been doing board games with my wife. Yep. So that's that. Josh, cool. what about you? Yeah, for me, sadly, it's just been uh, board games and role playing games. Uh, I've been working on a bunch of house projects. I haven't had time for games, um, but did get. Yeah, just a, a, I got like four games in rapid succession of Legion's Imperialis. It's still riding on that high and very much looking forward to the next one. But nothing in the since I, we recorded last. Nice. All right. All right. Campbell, what have you been up to? Uh, so I also haven't played any games. <laughs> hey, this uh, I told but, you this section's going to go. Fa- but also I'm playing a game tomorrow. 
Nice. Uh, hey, cool. Yeah, tomorrow I'm playing a game with my Templars versus Jeremiah's World Eaters. We're doing a 1,000 point game because that's all he's got painted right now. But I'm testing out the heck brick in that one. So want to see how that uh, really rolls out. So it's kind of like are the the new World Eater models too. Yeah, he's got all new World Eaters. It's so cool. Yeah, so it's good. Such, good. A so it's such a good range. So good. Such a good range of like four models. But yeah, <laughs> it's good range. They high quality models. models. They're very high quality. They carry it. But yeah, I'm just got that game going on and. I'm going to be dialing my dialing in my list for the Squig City Casino Royale in Pendleton, Oregon, later in April. Uh, so that's a couple <laughs> months out, but I want to kind of get some reps in, figure out how all this stuff works. I'm I've been playing with Marine detachments a lot. Like I was doing Iron Storm, I was doing Firestorm, I was doing the Templar mm-hmm. ones. I'm back to the Templar ones right now, so I'm going to see how all these play out. That's very cool. That's very cool. I actually really like when we talked about this in our episode where we were going over the Marine and and Tyranid release. And I really like the way they're breaking down. Like, here's the the different ways you can play each army. Like, it, it seems to really be flavorful, but each one has been given a lot. And there's not so many that it's confusing or so many that I feel like, oh, this one, they're, they're running out of ideas and this one became super watered down. Mm-hmm. Like, they all seem pretty solid in general. We yeah, should save this discussion too. for the next segment, Carl. That's fair. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll shut up. Okay, uh, <laughs> speaking... Dan, what have you been playing? If you would have told me this morning that I would be coming on independent characters and carrying the games played section of the show, I wouldn't have believed you. I, noted toddler haver, have actually played a bunch of games in the last few days. First off, I've been playing... Oh, sorry, Dan, look at the time. We got... (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. Take a quick break. We'll be back for the next episode, yeah. I'll go quick. Don't worry, I'll go quick. So Take your time. I've been playing some uh, Song of Us and Fire games, some soy games, Mm -hmm. and uh, I played against my friend Scott, Scott Horace Heresy, uh, known Baltimoreon. Uh, He is, he has Baratheons in, uh, and he's got beautifully painted Baratheons. He sent them off to Poland to get painted by some guy, and they came back, and they are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Nice. And so I played a little bit of uh, a kind of control game against, so Baratheons are, they're like heavily armored and very tough. Uh, mm-hmm. So they can be they can be difficult to deal with in combat. Uh, so I instead of trying to chop through them with my Greyjoy axes, I decided to play more of a control game and took a more defensive list. Uh, and I uh, eventually won the game. I think the final score was uh, something along the lines of like ten to seven. So a pretty close uh, game. And you know Scott Campbell knows Scott <clears throat> very well. And Scott's a very good forty k player. And guess what? He's also mm-hmm. a very good every game player. It's amazing. So, amazing. That's Josh, by the way. Yeah, I'm I'm not surprised. Uh so uh, you know, Soy is such a good game. Like it's it's so strategic, so much fun. And uh, I I do have to tell you one of the things that I think is very clever about that game is the whole like political track that's on yes, like, the side. Yes. Like yes. that is such first off, it makes so much sense in terms of that world and that that you know, mm-hmm. existence that mm-hmm. all those characters are. I just think it's, and I think it's a very clever addition to a war game. Right. So like Cersei Lannister isn't going to make a difference on a battlefield, right? She's not right. a fighter. But they have what's what's called the NC NCUs, non-combat units. Uh yeah. they they have this little board that you put on the side of the table uh and uh, when your NCUs take one of the spots, there's five spots in the board. Uh there's something that happens due to that spot and then they can do stuff based on what their uh NCU card says. Uh That's so simple. So you, your characters like Cersei, your characters like Catelyn Stark, uh, or Grandmaster Pycelle and Varys, and all these cool characters that you know wouldn't really have place in a battle, they're still there in the game. Uh, so, That's so cool, very very good game. Uh, and you know, play go, hanging out with Scott's always a always a thrill. He's a good guy, uh, and uh, he's been super busy at his job lately. So it was nice uh, for him and I to have just a little a uh, little hang. Uh, over at his house and play some uh, a good game. And then uh, last night, actually, went over to uh, my friend Tony's house and I played uh, my other friend Andy. We had it. We had a night. Uh, four of us went over there and uh, played a, a, a few games of soy. And uh, it was against Andy's Night's Watch. Uh, Night's mm-hmm. Watch. Uh, so there was recently, just like in 40k, the data slate just came out. Uh, there was recently an update to uh, Song of Ice and Fire as well, in a similar vein. Like they, uh, you know moved a few things around changed the points here and there for a couple things uh and uh, a data slate update right so 
we all got together because we wanted to try out new lists and see what the changes were and all that stuff. Now, Night's Watch, before the update, were kind of the big bads of the game. They had very good cards, very good units who hit very hard uh, and were kind of at the top of the heap. The uh, And my Greyjoy faction, I like the Greyjoys because I, I always... Something about like fantasy settings, I just love bad guys. Like... And Greyjoys are amongst the worst when it comes to bad, uh, though they got the new Bolton faction uh, that has been released. <laughs> last year. You want to talk bad. about bad guys? It's ugh. that guy is nuts. Bad in the bow. Yep. Uh, but the Boltons, uh, they're <laughs> they're they're, they're kind of in that world eaters world right now, where they don't have. They, I mean, they have a full set of mo- of units and models and stuff, but it's not yeah. as flushed out as the other ones. Uh, but they'll get there eventually. Uh, they're also very popular because why wouldn't they be? So their models are fully sick, though. Like full plate dudes riding on horses, covered in spikes and looking fearsome. Yeah, hell yeah. Like it's nice. like if uh, yeah. listeners, if you want to look up uh, Bolton flayed men, that is the 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 best unit to to get a an idea of what that faction looks like uh, for the Song of Ice and Fire miniature game. Anyway, so I played Andy. He had his Night's Watch, and it was a really interesting game. I took a very aggressive list led by Victorian Greyjoy. His whole thing is he charges and does a ton of damage on the charge. But Andy had a unit called Night's Watch Veterans, where their whole deal is they are minus one to hit, and every miss is a hit back on you. It's oh. called Counter Counter Strike. Uh, and then he had another ability from, uh, uh, not Corn Half Hand, uh, Cold Hands, who is a undead good guy who rides on an undead elk and okay. is a total badass. But he has another ability where he can make a unit before they fight a further minus one to hit. So my my silenced men, who are dudes... Uh, who ride around with Euron Greyjoy. They have their tongues cut out. They're very mean. They have big two-handed axes. They're rolling in, and they're pretty good at fighting. They roll up against the Night's Watch, uh, the veterans there, uh, and suddenly I'm fives to hit. And I'm like, Mm. "Uh uh-oh. And every miss is a hit back on my guys, and my guys only have a five-up armor save. So, uh, like, out of the eight attacks I was rolling in with, I lost five guys. (laughs) And I wow. was like, oh, so this is how this is going to go. Uh, so That's it went fun synergy. Uh, however, on the other side of the field, my house Harlaw Reapers completely rocked his Night Watch Spearman uh, in two turns of combat, just wrecked him. Uh, and it was like a, I mean, it was pretty spiky, like how, how they did it. It was unexpected. Uh, but so suddenly his whole right flank collapsed and I was able to maneuver my units around and, and uh, sort of pinch her pincher my way to victory uh and i won that one i think it was like 10 to 5 or something so a little a little better mm-hmm. on the uh on the score track there and and uh, soy games once you hit 10 points game's over like doesn't matter what turn it is it's just like somebody gets a 10 game's over uh so a lot oh, of these games like a lot that. of these games can take they can go pretty quick uh which is nice uh so a couple of soy games there and then last uh or, or wednesday so two nights ago I played a Blood Bowl League game against uh, my friend Dave's Orcs. Uh, we went to one of the, this, this is bar called the boardroom in Arlington, Virginia, where mm-hmm. people play a lot of games and stuff. And also like a lot of young people go on dates. <laughs> so it's like two middle-aged guys <laughs> playing Blood Bowl and like, like a bunch uh, of young. And then like a, 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 there was a date going very well near us. So good for them. Uh, the guy had cowboy boots on, which I thought was a little much for Arlington, Virginia, but it's bold, you know, it's a lot for uh, first she seemed to be too. into it. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> the romantic that, it, was de- it was definitely a wacky game because my the first the first thing I tried well not the first thing I tried to do in the turn my, my first turn at the end of the turn I went to try to pick up the ball and whiffed it and so mm-hmm. that's a turnover right there so the ball's out on the first turn and I'm like oh no but it, it turned out uh, okay because uh, Dave's the roles were definitely not with Dave this game uh, and so I managed to recover it and sneak in for a turn five TD. Uh, and then setting up for the kickoff after that uh, in the first half, ro- the first half rolling down, uh, I had a timely blitz, uh, which allowed me to disrupt his his line enough to stop him from scoring in the half. So I went up, uh, went into the half going uh, one to nothing, feeling pretty good about that. Uh, and I'm playing goblins here, which is goblins are terrible. The whole shtick in Blood Bowl is that they're really bad at Blood Bowl. So they take. <laughs> like weapons and stuff to cheat right, at right. so they're very fun but they're not an easy team to win games with so going into the half up one nothing i'm like hallelujah this is great 
Uh, so he got the ball and he marched down the field. He had an orc team, so they did what they do, marched down the field, scored on turn 13 out of 16. So I had three turns to take the lead. And wouldn't you know it, I get the ball, I take a turn setting it up, and then on my on my turn uh, 14 or 15, I hand the ball to my Doom Diver, mm. I, who's standing next to one of my trolls, who nice. picks him up <laughs> and throws him <laughs> and throws him down the field. And he at Doom Divers, they sort of glide forward and s- instead of scattering randomly. He glides <laughs> down and he hits the ground. I need a four up to, to not land dart. safely, right? <laughs> to yeah. not lawn dart. Exactly. And so I roll it <laughs> oh naturally, roll a one. I'm like, oh, but, Ooh. but I've got team rerolls. So I say, okay, I'm going to use team reroll here. And Re-roll. I nailed it. Rolled a four oh, or five no, or something. Okay. It didn't matter. I nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> he walks into the end zone uh, just nice and easy. And I go up two one. And at that point, it's a little late in the game for orcs who are kind of slow to get a score in. Uh, and so I win the game two to one in a, in nice. what I would consider an upset because my ge- my team has like the lowest team value in the league right now. Uh, but a little bit of that is engineered because yeah. one of the things you do with the goblin team in the league is you keep your team value low so you can take the good star players against <laughs> right. the good teams. So And you don't become a target for anybody. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's been it, it worked out. It, oh, that was Campbell. Campbell, did you hear it? Oh, I did hear it. It's been. It worked out. It was a good game. <laughs> Scrutable and, across podcast jokes. Yeah, and uh, I had a lot of fun, uh, and it was nice to grab a couple of beers during the game. And I hope the the date that went well. I hope it continued to go well, and those people had a nice nice <laughs> evening. Say, were they alligator skin uh, cowboy boots? They were. They were kind of pale cowboy boots. Were, were like, they? Were they rooting for for the goblins? Uh, okay, so a really drunk guy did come up to our table and ask what we were playing, uh, but he was like swaying. This is a Wednesday oh, yeah. night, oh, y'all. Yeah. This is a Wednesday night, so I don't. You know. So but he was he, he was professionals like, what, only what, at that point. Yeah. What what yeah. game is that? And I'm like, well, it's Blood Bowl. And he's like, did you guys make this game? Yes, yes, <laughs> I, I did. Like, I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I did. It's my game. It's me, Rick Presley, right. Jervis Johnson. That's me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, that's freaking fantastic, man. I'm glad you carried this segment for us. Thank you, Dan. It's my pleasure. Anytime. (laughs) All right, uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll come back, and then we'll actually get into the meat of the show. We'll do uh, part one of the Warrior Lodge, uh, and, and I'll be hosting that. So we will be right back. Okay, and we're back, and uh, this is going to be part one of the Warrior Lodge, the collab edition. And uh, so we're going to go through a series of topics here. And uh, we'll see what what everybody kind of thinks about each of these topics. So uh, topic one, uh, which is Black Library and the re-release of the Siege of Terra End in the Death Part 3. So as everybody knows, uh, when this highly coveted book went up for sale, uh, it was kind of scooped up by a bunch of um, scalpers. Games Workshop then came in and uh, saw all the complaints, came in, went and looked, and whatever magic they did, whether it was by IP, by address, by whatever, went and looked and and canceled a bunch of orders uh, and then re-released it on the following Wednesday and made it available, Um, which... We'll get to this and what about what I think about it in particular. But um, so, what are your thoughts on Games Workshop's efforts to stop scalpers, and and what Games Workshop attempted to do that following Wednesday? Which I, I will just add, some people um, still seemed very frustrated come that Wednesday. And I know of at least one person who had a legitimate order and then had it canceled and was incredibly frustrated by that. Yeah. Um, what, are, what are your guys' thoughts on that? And, and you want to start, you want to start Josh or you, you want to. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll kick it off, but I, yeah. I won't take too long. Um, yeah. So I, I obviously think it's a good thing that games workshop is uh, taking proactive measures to prevent scalpers from price gouging people. This is already a limited edition thing. Uh, games work prices are already high enough I, i'm sure a limited edition is a beautiful production value on those books so i'm sure it does mm-hmm. cost 
quite a bit more than your standard kind of edition books there with all the, the gold leafing and hardback covers and are they leather bound? I don't recall. But. They're, they're a fake leather uh, yeah. bound, but vegan uh, yeah, leather, there's gold please. Leaf. There's yeah. <laughs> what, what, was, what was that? Vegan camel? leather, the gentrified term for <laughs> yeah. pleather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cow, cow friendly leather. <laughs> yeah. It's vacuum. And, uh, <laughs> And there's a bunch of artwork inside. There's yeah. artwork plates and stuff. And yeah, it's super like high production value. So it's it's like it's a collector piece. It's not you're not just gonna read this thing. Like you're you. It's it's an artifact that you are already spending some extra cash in order to own this thing. And it's uh, yeah the presence of it. Um, so like I I appreciate that they've limited the scalpers because you're already paying a premium for this product as it is, and it's already limited availability. So kind of knowing that supply and demand is where it is already preventing that from, you know, taking the, the, the more extreme step on that with scalpers and just to kind of really, really increasing those prices. So I, I, I'm for that. I think it's a good thing. And um, yeah, I, that, that's, that's me. <laughs> Dan. Oh, yeah, Campbell, so- Campbell. Sorry. Campbell's will go first. <laughs> I was just putting a sentence filler in there to mark my place here. I was just oh, going to okay. say, it's it's a Band-Aid. Like, this was a Band-Aid solution. They wouldn't do this yeah. if there wasn't an identifiable problem. It's in their best interest to make people happy, not just because they care about people who enjoy the product or whatever, but if you can't get the thing you want, you're not going to be as likely to try to get the next thing. So I get why mm-hmm. they would do it. Made a lot of sense for them to do it. I saw not many complaints. What complaints there were often seemed kind of like a backflip like oh i ordered nine copies for my group how dare they cancel them it's like interesting sure, dog sure, sure. Um, love that love that for you uh but yeah i think i think we'll see how it plays out because if they do this again when of uh, end of the death part four and harder oh, comes up say that. <laughs> <laughs> the epilogue comes up. i know the series is done the shut epilogue. up um <laughs> but whenever the, the next impossible to get giga comes out down the line if they do the same thing again then cool we know it works uh in for the time being i don't have too much skin in the game because the last special edition thing i got was the sixth edition 40k special edition in 2012 and fool me once mm-hmm. uh so mm-hmm. This is just kind of my thoughts as an outsider, but I think it's a good thing that they tried something. I know that seems kind of damning with faint parades, but we'll see how it plays out. No, it's, I think it's fair, Dan. I mean, scalpers suck. Like mm-hmm. it just yeah. sucks. I, uh, you know, I've, I've I used to go to uh, right. I, I used to go to New York Comic Con uh, every year, and uh, one of the problems there is, or used to be, is that scalpers would get a bunch of tickets, and mm. regular people like me. Uh, who are going to buy a ticket for myself so I could go, couldn't get in. Uh, and, the, you know, they they put in a bunch of protections for, you. like, you have to, like, you have to do a, you have to create an account and you have to do all this. You can get so many per account. And it's annoying to get into New York Comic Con now, but it means that the people that want to go get to go, which is a good thing. And with the Games Workshop stuff, I saw a lot of complaints on Twitter where you know people were taking screenshots of like the hour in the queue or whatever i don't know if anybody actually spent an entire hour in the queue i Uh, did okay but like like that is it if that is what it takes to stop scalpers and to get let people get the products that they want to get i think it's fine i think it's a good thing it's could they have done it better could there have been like a pre-order process uh with some sort of like registration and vetting or something like that i'm sure there could right that's, it, that's interesting yeah like I'm, I'm sure they could have done it better but the fact that they're doing something about it is yeah. progress right yeah i think so, i think campbell nailed it like the fact that they 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 recognize that there's a problem that has to be addressed um sp- speaks up right I, I i as a person who this was the last book i needed in my collection and i was unable to get one fortunately cheyenne our friend down in southern california went into a GW store and was able to order one through there. But, you know, it, it, the whole thing did leave a bad taste in my mouth from the sense of the amount of stress to get this book was made me wish I had never started down this path. Right. And uh, that being said, um, they're playing a total defensive game. Right. I mean, like the scalpers are always going to try to get around whatever is in play and they only have to succeed 
kind of wants, well, you have to constantly be on the defensive. I, I like your idea of like a vetted pre-order thing. And my sense was on Wednesday, they may have been having people manually look at all the orders and cross-reference them just to make yeah, sure. Well, it's not like yeah. limited you know, to like 500 I, copies or something like that. 25, 2,500 copies worldwide, that's, I think. That's a few, but that's not more but than... it's not a, insurmountable. Yeah, a human yeah. being can, you know, sanity yeah. check that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I, don't, I don't know if that's what they were doing, but it, yeah, I mean, it was clearly... The, the, the queue did not solve it. As you said, Campbell, oh, I ordered nine for my buddies, like... I watched a video where a guy basically spun up a bunch of virtual machines and had all of those logging in, sitting in queues, waiting for him to be able to buy this. And I'm like, that, and he, and he, you know, and he was sitting there justifying it as, well, I'm trying to get mine and my friends and blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah. But all these virtual machines you've spun up are now sitting in that queue blocking everybody else. Thanks. You know, well, yeah. I have to do it because of scammers. I mean, like it's, it's this vicious cycle that it creates that, it's we're not going to get rid of scammers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're you're not going to get rid of the scalpers. I mean, it's just not going to happen. In terms of they're going to keep trying, you know, I, I don't know. It's turned me off from from buying limited edition stuff like this, popular limited edition stuff like that stuff. I feel that with not limited edition stuff, or at least as limited, where it's like a new box set comes out, and they'd be like, right. two-week pre-order, and... I, I like that a lot. It's less likely yeah, to cool run out. Also, I think sometimes they use that to predict how much they might need to make in the future. It might mean you have to wait yeah. longer to get the thing you want, but it's not insulin. You're not mm -hmm. going to die if you don't get Deathwing Assault, you know, by by February 13th or whatever. Yeah, it is a luxury product. I get it. You know? I mean, one of the things um, that they do over at New York Comic Con is they do pre-sales, right? So yeah. you have, so they can do like a, a print run of 100 or something and they can do a pre-sale. And the pre-sale... And everybody that wants to get in on it can can go for it, and knowing that only a hundred are going to go out, right? To like yeah. one to each person or something, uh, and then that'll give them a good idea of how many they need to print, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, uh, like I said, they could do vetted pre-release, vetted uh, registration for these kind of things. Like it's possible to do it. It's clear that they were scrambling and being like, "All right, we got to get these out. We got to get these to the customers, but we don't know how to do it fairly." Uh, so we've yeah. got this system. It's, it's not the tough. best system. So maybe in the future they can improve that. But your point, Carl, like scalpers are going to find a way. It's like cybersecurity, mm -hmm. right? Hackers, mm -hmm. all they got to do is be right once. I'm sorry, my monitors keep going off here. It's terrible. Uh, all they got to do is or is be right once and they're going to mm -hmm. gonna get in. They're going to get their stuff and they're going to go to eBay and sell it for 100% markup. And, you know, un you know, unfortunately, that stuff probably will sell because it's a limited edition collector's. Yeah, item. yeah. Yeah. Yep. So anyway, yeah, I mean, I, I think, you know, to sum up, I think they uh, they did the best with a mess <laughs> and, and tried to, to fix it uh, for those people that got screwed out of getting the copy. I, I feel bad for them. I consider myself incredibly lucky that somebody like Cheyenne was able to grab one for me. And, and uh, you know, boy, I lucked out because I was I, and I've said it before, but I was at the point where if, if I don't get this final book, I'm not going to pay a scalper price. I'm just going to sell the but, rest of the collection. But collectible now. flips on eBay is selling it for the reasonable price of $650 with free shipping. That's insane. That's insane. Yeah, with free shipping. Thanks. Thanks, that collectible is flips with a Z. Because, yeah. <laughs> of course, it is. All right. All right. Moving on from that dismal news. <laughs> um, we are, uh, we're now several months into the release of 10th edition, and codexes are starting to roll out over the next year and and on and we have we kind of get like a preview of here's what's coming uh what are your thoughts so far on 10th edition now you've probably got quite a few games under your belt do you feel it's like an improvement over the 8th 9th edition uh and what are your favorite changes to the 10th edition and what is your least favorite change that they've adopted and there's several questions kind of jammed in there at once Let's um, get back in the in the Wayback Machine, Carl, just yeah. for a second here. Let's go back to ninth edition, if we can. All right, Campbell, I got a question for you. You're playing a ninth edition game of Warhammer 40,000. Okay. How many books are you bringing to the game? I mean, I'm, is it early ninth edition or late ninth edition? We're, we're late talking, ninth. we're talking late ninth edition. Yeah. How many books, Campbell? All right, let's. Fortunately, I don't need to bring the big rule book with me because the main rules are in the Munitora manual, except for when they're not, which they sometimes small. were and sometimes small. Were. Yeah. Still counts. That's one. So that's one. 
I'm playing, let's say I'm playing Templars because I played Templars exclusively for the last three years, pretty much. Co- <laughs> Black Templars Codex. Black Templars Codex or Supplement? Oh, Supplement, yeah. And mm-hmm. then the Space mm-hmm. Marines Codex on top of that. So, so I'm playing three. With, I'm playing with three. And I don't, let's say, let's say it's just a normal match play game. So that's why. So what was what mission book are you bringing for that? So uh, which everyone rolled out in the past three months because they were putting them out every quarter for a hot minute. So that's four. And I so think that chapter approved mission books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and the Mutorum field manual by the end of it, that was a PDF by the end. That was a PDF. But it wasn't always. But it wasn't always. So for a while, I did have that fifth book with me as well. So we're going to count that. That's five so far. Mm-hmm. You weren't running any Forge World units, were you? Uh no, uh with my oh, guard with my guard I would have run my thunderbolt, but yeah I didn't I didn't end up getting an Astraeus. Ooh right, ooh. right. Like, I came see that's the thing I did ones. have an Astraeus, uh so I was routinely going with about six books to every yeah. game yeah. Uh, at the end of ninth and uh, boys I'll tell you and I think the community might be with me on this one I don't miss that right no. yeah no I didn't like carrying entire like weeks worth of holds from the library with me every single game compared mm-hmm. to now when uh i got everything i need right here this thing yeah. i already I have with me all the time let me ask you this though what makes you think by the end of 10th edition we're not going to be in the same boat i think for yeah. one the app That's and how question. it integrates things like that is a legit good question the app and how it integrates things is huge because mm-hmm. right now like the new down Dallas beta slate. There we go. The new updates they nice. do and so on. Good ones. They're all <laughs> the Dallas beta slate. Love a good spoonerism. They're all rolled in there. So I don't need to, you know, either cross out numbers in my old codex or bring printouts, which again I'd get from the library oh, with yeah. me to games. So I've got like old codices which just have these dog eared pages sticking out of them. I just need to toss because I'm never gonna need to look back at the Ultramarines FAQ circa 2018 or whatever. But yeah, like having all those rules just be kind of built into the app at this point is such a huge time saver, space saver, weight saver, saves most things except for battery life on my phone. And the way missions are handled right now with just like the Leviathan deck of cards, or if you're really canny, the tabletop battles app that Goonhammer makes, a little plug for that. Shout out, shout out, shout Uh, out. (laughs) Nice. uh, Yeah, you can just play with just that. And like that deck of cards is, you know, so much easier to carry around than all this other crap. Sure. Uh, So yeah, I, even if it changes, like, let's say tomorrow, uh, Leviathan, it's out the window. It's Kraken time, baby. And there's a new deck of cards, whatever. It's just a new deck of cards. I don't think you're going to need to shuffle more in there or whatever. Yeah. Like, or it's a new tab you select on tabletop battles. Exactly. And like, that's how the missions are too. Like it's a new season. All right, cool. You just select uh, 2024 mission pack one. Here we go. Like, I, I'm not going to say they're not going to introduce some stupid supplemental stuff down the line because mm-hmm. they might, they might actually exercise caution this time around and not let ninth edition become seventh edition over again already. But I feel pretty good so far. It's felt pretty good. Dan, you're holding your hand up. What is up? I have a follow up question for Carl. Yeah. All right. Because you asked what makes you think it's not going to be like this. So, Carl, I have a do you remember how many stratagems you had to know for a game of ninth edition 40K? I'll tell you no, because I didn't play a lot of ninth edition 40K when over the 35. pandemic. Yeah, oh, 35. Yeah. 35. You're not playing it, a variant. But chapter. there was a lot. <laughs> But there was a lot, yeah. and, and and it was daunting, mm-hmm. and, and and in particular by the end of end of ninth edition, there was no way to introduce a new player to the game. No, mm-hmm. absolutely not. And in tenth edition, we've got I think a far far better system, right? So we've got eleven uh, strats that are generic to everybody. Eleven is yes. is kind of a lot, but so far it's not so bad. And you might and not then, need all of them depending on your army, your list, etc. Yeah. Right. Right, and then you've got your six detachment stratagems. So at any point in a game of 10th edition, you're only going to need to know 17 strats, right? And again... But, and, the, and the reality is most times you've prepared, like, I'm going to use these five or six strats at a time. Right, exactly. Uh, and instead of each, like, faction having access of, like, nine to 18 warlord traits on top of a further nine to 18 relics and something like if you're playing thousand sons you know god help you but uh, another probably 
12 to 18 psychic powers to think about, mm -hmm. you've got three enhancements that you can take in your army out of a list of four. And uh, people's, everything's abilities and what they can do in the battle are on the data sheets or in the app, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's no there's no yeah. looking through books to see what this guy does and looking and referencing the relic tab to see what this relic does and all this stuff. Uh, the and new it, we've uh, command bunker update to the app also where it, everything, every strategy you have incredible. that you've built in your army, like you have a unit that qualifies for this and it's all on one page, every stat, every item, every strategy, beautiful. I played a game with someone at Nova in 2019 or whatever. It was probably Nova, it was some con. And I, did something let's say a unit of mine charged one of their units and they go hold on a second i need to check if i have a stratagem for this and they bring out a i kid you not magic the gathering binder and they start oh paging through where they have all their cards slotted in nine per sheet like yeah. you would with a magic but it was and i'm just patiently waiting there for 35 seconds plus you know as they yeah. scan each page and the fact that you just have a dozen realistically that you're and then they use. said no i don't have a yeah strategy. that's the thing because oh wait wait a minute are you playing eldar no. Oh, oh, okay. Never sorry. Mind. I don't have a strategy. Oh, are you playing Chaos <laughs> so, Marines? Oh, wait. Sorry. They need to be word bearers or else vengeance right. for Kalf doesn't work. <laughs> right. So on top of that, on top of that, Carl, uh, you've got the the codex design, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have your data sheets for your army, and then you have a number of detachments. Now, Space Marines, there's a lot of detachments, especially if you're playing something like Blood Angels or Dark Angels or whatever. But for most armies, you're going to have a choice between like three and six detachments per. Mm -hmm. So uh, while there are choices and there are a lot of differences between those detachments, there aren't nearly as many rules and rules interactions that result from that system. Now, of course, things could get more complicated, but they haven't yet, right? We've got a whole spate of codexes out, codices we're, we're, rather. We're, we're five or six months in. Yeah, and uh, they're... <laughs> And they have all been following the same design language and same design yeah, philosophy. I agree with that. So uh, there currently is no evidence to show that things are going to get worse in this 10th edition system. And on top of that, like I'm feeling very, very good about where the game is right now. Uh, Campbell and I played at the Nova Open GT uh, mm -hmm. in uh, uh, September of last year. Uh, and uh, the games, I thought, were excellent right mm -hmm. the the game is and we've been saying this on the show it's the best it's ever been right now and we've and listen i've heard i've heard you guys say that about different editions we've said mm -hmm. it about different editions but that's i mean that's the way it is that's the right? current state in your in your mind right at the end of ninth campbell and i were kind of done playing games of 40k outside of yeah, like i, I would when I, our I could close see that's when i started playing a much simpler game battletech classic yes. i'm not kidding <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't. I was solving it. for data. It was, it was too much. There, were, there was too many f facts and erratas. So what? And codexes what? What and, do you? What? What do you? Josh, do you, ha, ha, anything you disagree with there at that point or? Um. No. What I, I I'll chime in with the thing that I am missing the most out of tenth edition, and that are is are, um, the um chapter the uh chapter traits and like necron dynasties and things like that that if you are not playing one of the primary kind of foundational chapters of space marines that and the the detachments are very much catered towards the play style of those different ones and obviously you can mix and match but if you are playing a second plus founding chapter that doesn't kind of neatly fit into that. I absolutely miss the flavor of having my Marines are a little bit different than all the other Marines that are in existence period. Aside okay. So are you talking, are you talking about like the, the create your own chapter trait? Yeah. So the mix and match. Right. Yeah. So, oh, the, I yeah. mean, that wasn't that nobody abused that. Right. Oh, nobody, no, nobody, fig they, nobody they figured out a way, way to break that. Right. I miss the right? flavor Not of it and I miss the variety that it brought to the game. Okay. All right. Yeah. The flavor, the flavor of playing every every everybody who's like, yeah, they they're they're space wolves and they're painted orange. They're space wolves yeah. and they and they yeah, do no, three, three hits. My chapter fluff is that they win. Yeah, right. no, we know yeah. that one. Winning but is I, a thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I get what you mean yeah. though, because yeah, there are these like six neat categories to fit into, but I like that they're not. You know, this is the salamander's flavored detachment, 
but I'm playing Black right. Templars in it. And it works, yeah, it works because too. Yeah. it's still yeah. about getting up close and burning stuff. That feels right for Templars. You might be like, ooh, I really like bikers. You're not playing White Scars. You're, you've got Ultramarines, but why wouldn't the Ultramarines like Assault Company be just as good at riding motorcycles? I feel right. like there's a lot of wiggle room there. Dan, what up? So I'm I'm actually going to push back a little bit on on this, Josh. I think that the fact that they've opened up the they've they've pulled away the abilities of the armies from the paint job. So I so p- as a Raven Guard player, I'm playing a, a first founding uh, army that has mm. had rules since like eighth edition for Raven Guard, right? And all my guys are painted like Raven Guard. So if I show up to a table and I'm playing not Raven Guard. For me, it's dissonant. It doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. But in 10th, I can go in and say, well, I want to take a lot of Dreadnoughts this game, so I'm going to do the Iron Storm Spearhead, which sure is flavored like Iron Hands, but it isn't necessarily Iron Hands. right? Uh, Or if I'm like, I got a lot of Phobos stuff that I want to play with, so I'm going to play a Vanguard Spearhead today. Or I've got a bunch of transports and Flamestorm Aggressors, so I'm going whatever the salamanders thing is called right I, which i the something assault Flame force storm. i don't know firestorm uh, firestorm, firestorm assault storm. force yeah. yeah there we go so like i think that it opens it up for people to experiment with different detachments to experiment with different themes on their army based on their collection instead of shoehorning my you know black power armor bird adorned dudes into only doing one chapter tactic and, and I and I get like for the people that's interesting. That, that's an interesting perspective on it, actually. Yeah, and, and for I the people thought that, about it that way that have homebrew chapters, yeah, they can do that stuff where they can mix and match and do their own thing, whatever. But for those of us uh, who are playing Iron Hands or Imperial Fists or Salamanders or Ultramarines or whatever else, like we can go and and mix things up now with the blessing of Games Workshop. Yeah, yeah, like, I, I yeah. knew. And, and I like, love that yeah. the the variety of detachments are available to everybody. I just begrudge that, like a Ultramarines detachment of whatever is going to look exactly the same as a Raven Guard detachment of well, the same thing. Well, you guys comes, are playing the same detachment. Yeah, yeah. I, but I miss the chapter then, tactics as an additional layer. I'm not saying either or, but I'm saying in addition to is, and that's probably because I'm playing a not a um, first not non supported. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah, playing I feel a like, world raven guard successor but they don't play like raven guard so it doesn't really fit because yeah my fo- if i'm running the phobos detachment with my ultramarines and dan's running the phobos detachment with his raven guard in a lot of ways they are going to look similar but there is so much down to army construction where i might right, be like yeah. well i'm doing the phobos thing tactical ultramarines here we go with all the stompy robots and the mysteriously stealthy stompy robots and like incursors and stuff and dan since he's playing raven guard is gonna go with a lot of jumpy lads instead and you might instead go with a lot of assault intercessors and that same sort of thing just to kind of you can still have flavor for an army with how you construct it not just with their nominal rules i'm not saying you're wrong i do feel how you're feeling i bet i have a gut feeling that or actually i have a question josh if there was like a shark sharkadon's special character or special unit just just one you know like Tiberius yeah awake. if the red wake was back <laughs> there's a model you know? for it he just doesn't, yeah no if tybros the anymore. short if tybros the short king got embigged and got new rules <laughs> how would you feel would that be enough for you would that's a good yeah. question like what would what would it take aside from just a full-on like to the same level as you know uh firestorm or whatever what would it take yeah, so that that was true in fifth edition because you had to have the character in fifth mm-hmm. edition to really unlock the chapter. And I like I don't want to go back to that. I'll be super no, it was clear about so that. Like, yeah. I, we don't want to see. There was, there was a whole bunch again, of ultra, right? like, yeah. ultramarine uh, uh, salamander conversions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the other thing too that I like, I'm not only referring to marines on this. So I'm also looking at necrons and all the dynastic choices that they used to have. And it so it's like it's not just marines. You can. Uh, every faction that had some kind of different flavor of a chapter had their unique type rule thing. just yeah. to separate them a little bit of play style variety w- that you could either tie into list building or detachment choice or things like that. And for me, it's just like, it's that little extra level of either theme. Obviously people could abuse stuff, but some themes, some personality, some choice and variety. And uh, that's the one thing I'm missing. No, I, I think that's totally valid. Uh, I, and I think I think there's definitely going to be a lot of hobbyists and gamers who feel the same way. Uh, and 
like t- to your point, I I do feel it a little bit, right? Like I, it would be cool to have a little more like Raven Guard flavor or whatever. But I also remember back into the days of like fourth edition and, and stuff like that, where like that didn't exist for anybody, you know, like unless you took the specific character or did. Whatever. There was a, there like, was a in in fourth edition. There was this table in the Space Marine Codex that you could kind of mix like two things from yeah, you had to say <laughs> right. positive yeah. but, it was, yeah. but I never yeah. felt it was particularly you know it, it, it hadn't been delved into deeply mm-hmm. at that point. I, I think yeah. I think the current system is a is a good compromise between like rules at work and flavor. Where whereas it's not like in ninth edition I feel like we had way too much flavor and so the rules were crazy. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. uh, where whereas whereas now, yeah, maybe maybe the 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 flavor and the the theming that we're used to from eighth and ninth edition isn't there as much, but the rules are a whole lot easier to parse. Mm-hmm. And for me, like Absolutely. that's that's good. Yeah. yeah, I frequently look at the end of ninth edition, and I go, um, you know, eighth edition was eighth edition came on the heels of of seventh, where seventh was just like the end of ninth edition, mm-hmm. if not. Probably a little it, it, worse. seventh way was worse. worse. It was a lot less way fun worse. to play. Unkill, unkillable death, death stars, invisibility, oh, invisibility. Uh, two yeah. up cover yes. saves. Get it, get out of here. Mm-hmm. Bring never it, again. bringing eight hundred books to the table. You say never again, but I at the end of ninth edition, I felt like, how did we get back here again? Yeah. It was seventh. Like, yeah. Didn't yeah. we not? Yeah. Well, I heard and, a story. So, I, I heard a story, and this is this is a story. So you know, grain of salt with this, y'all. But that executives at G Dub were going to play a game of ninth edition 40k and were so disappointed with the rules bloat that they told the rules team at late stage development and 10th to re-index the entire edition because this stinks now interesting i don't know if that's true or not i, but I did hear true. that i know a couple it's, people like it's ask. true <laughs> it's true that i heard it yeah. <laughs> it's true that you heard it okay well we'll, we'll on that note on that note, does anybody feel like they have anything else to add to this? I, mean, I think you've you made some great. We've points. kind of made a topic within a topic here because the topic was yeah. and that's how okay. much have you liked Tenth Edition? And it sounds like a I've, lot from I've Campbell and Dan. It. It's the mm-hmm. it best the games ever been. The only time the game's been better was when I was fourteen years old and had no other obligations in my life. And that has nothing to do with the game itself. That has to do with being uh, those days. fourteen. The heady in summer. days. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's really good right it, now. It's, it really it's a good is. freaking game. Like I have not always said that. About is there anything guys. missing? I mean, we heard what Josh thinks is missing. You guys think there's anything missing you'd like to see? Well, I just want to. I, I, so I, I want to point out one thing that I really like is that it's not alternating activation yet, right? But there are elements of alternating activation in the game. Stuff like Overwatch. It feels like you you are having to pay attention to what your opponent yeah, you is. You can't doing. just yes. go make a sandwich. Yeah. Go ahead and do your there. moves. I'm going to yes. go use the restroom. Right. right. Yeah. So <laughs> things like Overwatch, things like squad tactics, things like yeah. where you can react to what your opponent is doing while they're doing it, I think is something that was completely missing in previous editions of the game. And it makes it far more interesting and far more engaging through the opponent's turn. So that's pro- yeah. that's probably Probably my favorite thing uh, to do with the new 10th edition. I'd say the one thing I think is missing is, or at least to me, is army construction. I don't like that it's take a character, then go off king. Like, I like having armies look like armies. <laughs> I like, you know, yeah. and yeah, some of that you, might yeah. just be because I've been playing this game for ever so i'm used to the force organizational chart and we don't need to go back to that strictly but i miss troops yeah, i think i, 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 I like troops the, um, I like, like i just painted 10 crusaders i plan on painting 10 to uh, 20 y'all. more <laughs> i ha- i have something like 30 intercessors painted yep. and i'm happy to never use them it's fine <laughs> but i also They're bad. feel like objective control kind of forces some it of forces a bit in, of it into play it anyway. forces a bit yeah. of it and does disadvantage some skew lists fortunately but i yep. i like yep. armies to like armies i don't like to roll up to a table and be like I'm oh cool it. here's yep you know, six big monsters in the character or whatever. I'm like, that's not an army. That's a collection of toys. Okay. I got a question for you, Campbell. How many times percentage wise, what percent of an intercessor unit shooting was actually important to your games in ninth edition? I didn't take them in ninth edition. I was taking. Okay, crusaders. well, I, I, I can answer. I can answer for myself. It's, uh, oh, you can answer your own question. I imagine. It's yes, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> It, less than five right yeah. it's it's like two to three minutes of rolling dice for a unit that's not going to kill anything not going to do anything but you're just going to do it because they can and you're just going to do yep. it and it's it slows down the game that's so funny that's uh, with my ultras i did 
uh, quite a bit because you could, in the assault it, it with I've already like offloaded all this from my memory here, but there was the thing where it's like with the Ultramarines chapter tactic, like their guns could become like plus one AP in the tactical doctrine. And there are ways to be in the tactical doctrine for multiple turns. So I was able to get like a bunch of re-rolling bolt rifles with AP two and stuff. So they did have some effect. Could they? That's great. Yeah, they and but again, I was building around it. I was in a specific army construction that worked well with it. Uh, yeah, but replace intercessors here for like termagants or guardian squads right. or you know whatever else like regular jobbers jerk. You're just wasting. Yeah. You're just wasting rules. Yeah. It's wasting time, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. And, and yeah. I think absolutely. I think something about this the tenth edition where you can just take units that either you want to or that are going to do well for you. I think is good, mm-hmm. right? It, it's mm-hmm. it's it makes the game faster uh, and it makes it. Uh, you know the the whole troop tax thing i was never really a fan of because a lot of troops just suck like they're just not good they don't impact the game that's, very a, that's much. an int- you raise an interesting point dan where um you know troops on one side are maybe not necessarily as good as troops on another side even though they cost they may try to adjust it i think there's a lot more attention to detail being paid on adjusting costs of things right now we just saw an adjustment come up recently so i think i appreciate that they're doing that um I do sometimes, boy, I'm going to sound like a hypocrite, sometimes miss the granularity of being able to, like, it's hard for me to leave 15 points on the table and be like, ah, my yeah, list comes that, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I get it. And 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 in the end, you know, for us, I don't think it's that big a deal. Um, but it is hard to let go of old habits. Yep. And so that, that yeah, does the, like, well, I could just take a plasma <laughs> pistol on this guy. Oh, no, you can't. You the know? list so, I'm okay. making for Nova is is 1970. And that, uh, and that for, hurts like that yeah, 30 points you're like do, I do not like it. I am not a fan of that. I'll, no. I will I will cop to that. I do not like that. I would like yeah, it to be so. around around 2000 please yeah, I, but you know. I I get I, it. But 30 points seems like a lot. More well, I think no more rolls is, around yeah. you can probably drop points and add something though. Well, yeah, yeah, maybe maybe we'll get an update in between maybe. then and uh, then and now, but it's, it's still it does it does kind of yeah. All smells right. Well, bad, in, in the interest of time, let's move on to our next topic, which is the old world baby. The old world is back. What are your thoughts on the release of the old world so far? Is it what you expected? Are you excited about it? Are either of you embracing it? I have a feeling I know one of you is. Um <laughs> And then, and then there's a second part here, which is uh, the Legends armies. They're moving away from some of some of the armies away from the core game, and and I have I have some thoughts about that that I'll share after, at the end. But um, Josh, let's start with you. I'm in. I, you are in. I didn't think I was, but I'm in. Uh, what army? And this is what the hell? This is <laughs> one. I know. <laughs> this is 100 nostalgic driven. Uh, I absolutely loved fifth and sixth edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battles. And this is bringing me back in, like reading through the rules. It's so true to that with some really nice updates to it um, that I like it's it's really it's the rule set and the nostalgia that is 100 percent brought me back in. And ironically, I am actually going in for vampire accounts because I already have I, I think I need two models to finish uh, an army for it at this point because I've just had stuff sitting in a box forever, like uh, things right. that people have I'm given done. to me or like yeah uh i'm done with you <laughs> that's, that's a legends army it's a legends army it and i'm like and, and at this point i'm not going in for any of the new stuff that they come out with and like and we'll see how that plays out and it, for me it was an interesting question mark of do i want to like rebase stuff <laughs> do i want to repaint stuff knowing that this is already a legacy <clears throat> army um mm-hmm. and at this point i am because it's a you know small small investment and the the attention to detail and love that went into those i, I it's it feels like a full force to me that's very uh, and interesting I'm, that is not the answer i thought i was gonna get from you and i'm very happy with that and i like, say so i absolutely loved yeah fifth and sixth edition fantasy so here and it, it really feels like it's come back to that in a in a good way with just some nice little you, updates. you and travis can have vampire count battle off a big <laughs> part of that is on. that i i've been talking to travis so he's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there we go yeah all right, Travis is on my list as well. Let me yep. write this down. <laughs> <laughs> the, Campbell. The, the list of Carl over yeah. here. It's growing. It's, it's the list he reads every <laughs> yeah. night before bed. Yeah. That's right. All right. New list uh, of grudges. Her, so this is the release of it is about what I expected, which is a slow rollout of old stuff with get you by rules and some some new stuff. What new stuff has been pretty minimal. 
uh, but that's kind of fine. Like, as Josh said, this is 100% driven by nostalgia for fifth and sixth edition. I'm like, cool, he got it in one. And that's not a bad thing. Like, I'm I'm being facetious here, but that's not a bad thing. Like, it's fine to play to people's nostalgia. It's fine to aim for that demographic. And I've got some nostalgia for that myself because I've got a massive square base empire army. Now, will I rebase 200 models on 20 millimeter bases? God, no. You could not, you could pay me enough, but uh, I don't really want to disclose that number on the show right now. Yeah, because they're all going on 25s now. So I might go out there and get some movement trays that like adapt their footprint because those, yeah, those are I've seen, I've seen a lot of options for that. That's yeah. got to be easy. Yeah, there's probably already 3D printable. Oh, there, there's like, MDF ones that Litco yeah. made before this thing got a, announced. Like they, go. they probably got a warehouse full of them. So like I've got the army. I'd love to give it a try. I'm not like, Actually, I don't need to go all in. I've already got everything I need. I just need to buy a rule book and that's fine. And I think the biggest challenge is going to be if it sticks around. Because like the whole reason this is back realistically is because of Total War. Because yeah, like when Total War came out and I remember the launcher from that just said like, uh, bring the game to life on the tabletop. And I'm like, cool, it's Carl France. No, that's Free Guild General on Griffin. <laughs> Oh, my favorite. He's he's my favorite dude. Free Guild General and Griffin. Free Guild General. I love Copyright that guy. Infringing Carl Franz. Yeah, yeah. It's Carl Franz, but with a C. Farrell King. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Carl, Carl Franz we have at home. Yeah, precisely. Yeah, so great value Carl Franz you could get on a round base, but it wasn't Warhammer Fantasy. It's Age of Sigmar, which is right. a different game that I love very dearly. And I, I have a lot of love for the old world because uh, I have a receding hairline. And that's all fine. <laughs> I think the issue is going to be keeping the game alive because it's got yeah. a decent amount of momentum right now. Like I was in a store the other day in Arizona where people were like the pre-orders had sold out and appeal my local game store here in Oregon are like going pretty wild for they it. sold out here. Too. Yeah, they're yeah. also not making a ton because it's a specialist game, so they right. don't have a lot of right. production. I think the two challenges are one that production because specialist games when you think of like necromunda uh aeronautic imperialis rip or uh Pour it out. yeah exactly <laughs> exactly like when you think about these games it was like a couple kits a quarter a half a year and when you yeah, think of warhammer yeah. fantasy where it's massive armies of hundreds of models with dozens of units in each one that's not really sustainable with the production they've got right now uh, so yeah. you're going to run into a lot of the stock issues. I feel like you're going to run into a lot of the issues you run into with the Games Workshop stuff, uh, which does bite. Now, the stuff they're making is cool. It's so happy to see old friends again. It's cool. They're like touching up old models or releasing unreleased models, which is super neat. Uh, but I think the real big problem is going to be interest because Warhammer Fantasy died because no one was buying it. Like there's this mm -hmm. interview that Jordan Sorcery on YouTube did with Alan Merritt, who was the former head of IP at GW, where Alan Merritt said, yeah, he's like, it's me. I killed Warhammer Fantasy. I tried to do it with the Storm of Chaos campaign. And it didn't take, so we had to do it again because no one was buying it. Oh. And that's really sad to hear because Warhammer Fantasy, like the old world is such a great setting. It has such lush imagery, great models. Like yeah. there's a lot to love there, but it just doesn't have. But when the buy-in for the army you want to play is 300 models. Man, it's 200 models. Come on. Plus 20 cavalry. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't exaggerate. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, no, like I'm goofing, but yeah, it's a big buy in. If when they announced it, I was like, ooh, is it going to be like War Master or something? Like a little bit less of a footprint where maybe it's easier to get a force going? No, nah, it's just your old stuff again. Okay. Yeah. I, know. I want to try it. Dan, Dan, your uh, thoughts? I'm not going to be playing it. One, uh, I don't oh, have thank time. Thank God. Solidarity with somebody. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't have time. And I mean, I fondly remember uh, Warhammer from those days, uh, but Warhammer Total War exists. So you know whatever yeah. uh yeah. the i th i think as far as the release goes i i you know i i'm not i don't care about it so yeah. to me yeah. i i don't have any skin in the game it's not no so much the yeah. um the uh, the the legends thing i know some people are upset about the legends thing uh but i want people to look at it from a perspective of before the legends announcement you had no reason to use your vampire like your whole game was legends before right? now you do your whole game yeah. was so so okay while your faction might not be part of the ongoing story mm. you can still play with it now that's why and I made it. Yeah. and i get i get that you you know might some people might if feel you, alienated by the, that but you got to look at it like it didn't exist and now it does 
And sure, you, it's not going to be the best for you personally with the army you have, but it's still there for you. So, Josh, if you yeah. had to buy a whole new army, would you be in? No. Okay. No. Um, yeah, for me, I, I mean, look, I was never a fantasy player. I actually don't care for the square base stuff and the the formation movements. It's it, it, uh, visually, it doesn't appeal to me as much. Um, I have to say, though, like I was fantasy curious up until the release and then i saw that the release was like oh yeah it's the old skeletons and the old things and i was like oh for all the announcement two three years ago to longer now i was kind of expecting yeah maybe it was longer than that it was pre pre-pandemic yeah. I, like i was kind of expecting like here's new baseline models or or something along that line so i, I gotta tell you i'm from my perspective i was like Oh, I'm I'm so glad they did that because I don't need to another yeah. game yep. at this point. I yeah. think new stuff. Yeah. Will I think it's great for people. But yeah. for sure, some of the some of the yeah. sculpts that they're redoing are bring back to life. I know they're remastered, putting a ton of time, effort, and finances yeah, yeah, into and they remastering look great. stuff. But they're I, and I think to your point that like that is turning some people off of the game. Like some of those mm-hmm. sculpts that like there was a the Bretonian uh, Baron with like the really sharp featured face and like yeah that's one of the worst faces i've yeah. seen in a long time not a fan at all and like this is something that, that a lot of energy has been put into to revitalizing and before dan before you go the only other thing that would have got me into it would have been potentially skaven and they got legend out so i'm like oh how do you, and how do you have warhammer fantasy without yeah, it's core skaven? to the setting a, like i mean i feel like it's so in, you know yeah core so dan yeah, so imagine, if you will, a guy who had a fifth or sixth edition Warhammer Fantasy Battles army. And this and we're Set talking 20, 2023, right? <laughs> and Warhammer if Fantasy's done, guys out of the hobby, but he kept his minis. Then 2023 comes around, his friends, he's back in the hobby for whatever reason, and his friends are talking about AOS and he's like, "Oh, man, AOS. I I, I want to get into it. I want to play." And he rebases his old minis. Oh, yeah. Brutal. And then, and then Warhammer, the old world comes out, and his army that he plays is one is like Bretonians or Tomb Kings or something, one of the foremost that are not legends. And now he's got to go rebase his miniatures that yeah. he rebased yeah. back yeah, onto rough, square bases. That's a rough situation. Yeah, I agree. Do you think? I do agree. you think this guy exists? Because I think he. Does. I think oh, he's. Absolutely. I think oh, sure. he's yeah. next going to be the person who burns his army on YouTube. Like <laughs> this. Yeah. So I. This is actually my last point too. Was I really wish that they stuck with round bases, because one, people have rebased their armies. Two, it means they don't yeah. need to keep making square bases just from a production standpoint. And uh, three, it, you can make them work with movement trays. Like you, yeah, like yeah, absolutely. Uh, Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, Song of Ice and Fire stuck, does that. Uh, yeah, of, they, they have stuck yeah. my demons into a tray. Exactly. And War, yeah. Hell, they could have just used the War of the Ring ones because War of the Ring had those too, yeah. which was essentially yeah. the Apocalypse version, the Middle Earth strategy battle game. I actually modified those War of the Ring ones for uh, Eighth Edition Fantasy for my Demon Army at the time. So I could exactly play like both, both systems. Yeah. And then there's like. It's like, okay, let's say you want to play Lizard Men or Chaos Warriors of Chaos, one of the armies that has the other new one. models. It's like, oh, so if they introduce these to the setting, are they going to sell the new models on two small bases or introduce the busted old ones? What are we doing here? So th- that's we're just going to legend it. My yeah. question for Carl is you do have a Chaos Army, Chaos Fantasy Army, that is probably pretty much everything you need to be uh, the old world compliant minus the round bases. Is that something that would have any draw for you with either adapters to make them square bases or like you, you have the models, they're painted gorgeous, like ready to go. So yeah. Does that, no, does that sway really. at all? So, okay. <laughs> Did you forget you had that uh-huh. army? No, <laughs> I, d- no, I, I have, <laughs> I just looked at it yeah. a few minutes ago. Um, no, I just, I don't have a real interest in, in, in playing. Like I'm kind of, you know, even if you and Jody and everybody over there got into it, I'd be like, you know, I'm I'm sitting this one out. Okay. I'm sitting this one out. Had you? Asked- I do love. I do love the lore of the old world, yeah. like mm-hmm. very Absolutely. much. Like, mm-hmm. and and I never really got into it until after it was gone, and then I was like, oh man, this is really cool. So I love like the RPG based on Warhammer Fantasy. Mm-hmm. I love um, the Total War stuff, like all that. 
I, lo- I love it. I, I just don't have really any interest in the game. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, yeah. For me, it, honestly, it's a surprise. Like two weeks ago, I had zero interest in the old world. And then I actually like, <laughs> I know <laughs> saw the legends armies, saw the rules. And I was like, damn it. I like, I'm in like, this is, it's doing it for me. I mean, uh, I, I think li- the rules are, are the, the thing that I'm most interested in. I, I, yeah. I looked at, you know, all their, their articles and stuff that they were previewing the rules. I was like, Hey, I might get into this, but that then I, I thought I was like, this is not a game for me. This is a game for people who already have fantasy armies that have just been sitting on the shelf. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to struggle to buy a, because if I was going to play it, I would want to play night goblins and I'm not going to buy 300 night. Goblins. Well, they're the same I'm model still. So, <laughs> but I'm just not going to do it. I don't have time for that. I don't want I'm much to do more it. interested in Lord of the Rings than I am. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. And I'm not interested yeah. in that. So, <laughs> I actually am. This the stupid Amazon show got me like pumped up. Yeah, for it. Same. All right. Let, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on to the next topic, which is uh, <clears throat> and we kind of touched on this earlier because you guys were hitting. I was almost going to tell you to shut up, but uh, <laughs> Games Workshop and Technology, the new website, new app updates, which I think we all agree are great updates. To the new app, Warhammer TV, Warhammer Community, etc. How do you think Games Workshop is doing with their general approach and strategy towards the community utilized tools? Like where have they kind of fallen down and where are they succeeding? And what would you like to see them do going forward? So I can start if you're not tired of not hearing me talk yet. Yeah, Campbell. All right. So no. the app, like we've talked about it, it's really good. Like it's really useful. Yeah. It's reactive. It's usable off now. Now it it's usable offline. So like I was on a plane. And I didn't pay for Wi-Fi because, yeah, you know, I'm not. They're not taking that pound of flesh for me. It doesn't even work when you pay for Wi-Fi. It's a scam. That's true. <laughs> um, yeah, that that's the hot goss from this show. But yeah, like I was able to just build lists and like work out my you know list for this tournament and so yeah. on while I'm just like kill the way I, in the way I would normally just be otherwise killing time on my phone in a place with no service. Like the app works so nicely. The new command bunker thing they put in there just this week is so yeah. freaking cool. Getting rave reviews as well too, it should. Right? Uh, there's in yeah. a uh, on Go- we were talking on Goonhammer and one of them was like, "Games Workshop isn't supposed to make good apps. That's our thing." Yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> but it, it's really good. The only place I feel it stumbles is with the paywall. Now, all right, companies need to make money to keep the lights on. Yada yada. All right, that makes sense to me. But with the for those who maybe haven't engaged with it, once a Codex for Army comes out. Let's, so let's say Codex Tyranids has come out. I don't have that yeah, book. I yeah. can't put in the code. I can't look at anything. I can't even look at pictures yeah. of them on the app. Now, in the yeah. Age of Sigmar... I ran yeah, into that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I played a, when I played a game at the Games Store the other day, um, like right when the Codex for Marines came out, I was like, oh, nuts. Uh, I'm locked out. I just went over, <laughs> bought it, cut the plastic open, but, put, bought put the, the code codex. in, yeah. closed it, haven't opened the book yeah. since. But You know what? Yeah. Worked it working as intended. No, exactly. Cool. Yeah. They got, they right got my 50 bucks. <laughs> But the Age yeah. of Sigmar app, the way that works is I don't have the Flesh Eater Courts book. I can look at you can everything except the army yeah. rules. And I can't. So yeah. I feel like if I were in my like dream world compromise thought here would be you could look at the army, everything they got and like one detachment, basically like the index attachment and everything yeah. else is behind the paywall. And I feel like that would be I feel like that would be kind of my happy compromise. I feel like that way. Every yeah, kind of happy, that. but it's at least enough of a get you by so you could, you know, look at it before buying in. You could, yeah, you could say, Is this for me yeah. before going into but, it? Yeah, I, but I again, get you. I'm the I business genius whose own merch store was losing us money for a, a while, so maybe you shouldn't listen to me. <laughs> that is not as not, not a joke. That is not that a is joke. Not a we need to talk about that because I don't want to get in that situation. No, I, I, I've learned a thing or two. I can help you out that after the show. All right. Well, we we actually just did a huge order of new T-shirts. So. Oh well, rip. We're we're actually shipping them ourselves. Ooh, so. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Sorry. We'll talk about that too. <laughs> yeah, but it's you know we're doing it for a reason. Okay, Dan, thoughts? App good. Uh, website not <laughs> not so good. Uh, <laughs> I think they I think they stumbled a little bit on the implementation of their new website. Uh, I am listen. I'm not a web designer. I am an audio engineer. And so I could, I could not make them a better website. We couldn't do it. Uh, they, they clearly wanted to merge their product lines and their different, 
uh, sort of mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. ways into the hobby into one place. I get that. Yeah. Uh, Which they've I, tried to do for years. Like, they've talked about doing that for years, by the way. Yeah. And, like, okay, sure. Like, I don't, you know, it's it just it just doesn't feel as good to use as as the old website did. Um, mm-hmm. It's definitely better than the Forgeable website because the Forgeable website was slow. I don't know if you guys yep. remember that, but that website mm-hmm. was super slow. Uh, so it, it's not it's not it's not great, right? But again, I don't want to, for me personally, be too critical because I don't really know what you to know do what? to I, make I'll, that. I'll good. help you. I I did do web design. Okay, and. Uh, it's it's bad it's bad and i talked i talked about this before though <laughs> i got some criticism from somebody in particular who said i was too harsh on it but i i don't think i am i think uh it i i almost laid out like i think exactly what the story was was the ceo of gw was like in in the the earnings statement we're going to launch this new website it's going to drive all these sales blah, blah blah here's here's launch and they're like well it's not going as fast as we thought the project blah blah okay give us a list of everything that's wrong. Here's the list. Great. Fix these critical things. Everything else, just launch with it as it is and fix it as we go. And I'm pretty sure that's what's occurred because you're seeing iterations on it. It's getting better. Like now you can look around in the 360. Yeah. 360 was broken. That was a pretty big bummer. Yeah. But the search features and, and, and all that is, is not working well. And so they, they have some work to do. I, I think that's fair to say it launched too early. Like it, if you're telling me it's a good website, I think you're wrong. <laughs> no, <laughs> that, I, I mean you see no a lot. Other. You see a lot of this in the world where where products and websites and things like that are launched too early with the idea that they're going to fix it the as they go. In games, it happens. Video games know, all, all the, the time. time, right? So I, I mean, Rogue Trader. This, this is this is. <laughs> This is what we live in, right? This is this yeah. is where we live. This is what we do. Is that you've got for profit companies uh, trying to to renew the way you know, put a new yes. sh- uh, shine on their website, and they're they're going to do it in the cheapest way possible, and that's just how it is. And so, yeah. like at the but at the end of the day, for me, like it's just a website. I can still buy things off of it. So while it doesn't look as good or work as good as the old one. It's still serving its purpose. So at the end of the day, I'm like, all right, whatever. Not, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Uh, but again, Josh, you and I have talked. It's not good. Talked the website ad nauseum at this point. So I don't think. Yeah. The the one thing I'll add to it, and that this is this just sums up the whole website for me is I'm on Games Workshop's mailing list, as I'm sure most of us are. Like you get the emails with preview stuff on there. Mm -hmm. You click on the Mm -hmm. link, and it doesn't work on the website. Like it doesn't take you to that link in the website because those are coded for different geographies and the website just can't remember that I'm in the U S right. So like mm-hmm. I love the, it. the link automatically breaks itself from my favorite material the, directly from games workshop directly to their website. And my favorite was the old bug where you'd go to the site and it, for some reason, put you in Australia and you'd see everything in Australian dollars. And you're like, what? Yeah. How did this happen? <laughs> then you're like, Oh my God. Okay. It's just the Australians. That I feel so taking. bad for the Aussies, <laughs> man. They, they're getting fleeced but, down there. But what about, you know, it doesn't get a lot of, of play, but there was a time where they got rid of like all of their social media sites and everything they did then did bring warhammer community in and they brought in the social media sites in particular facebook site which i know dan you, you don't use but um you know but now i like what do you i think their warhammer community site is fantastic to be honest with you so warcom is marketing we do yeah. we do have yeah, to remember of that yeah, like, of course it's it's Absolutely. it's not it's not it it says warhammer community but it but if it was it, if it was truly what it was, it would be Warhammer marketing, yeah. right? So, but that being said, it's still something that they update three times a day with yeah. content, with new content, with interesting for the most part content, uh, and they are trying to engage with their audience on a daily basis, right? Which is great, I think, as from a marketing standpoint, from a community standpoint, that is great. Uh, I know that some of the people that work in Warhammer community do look at it mm-hmm. as like a community and not just marketing for the thing. So there are good intentions involved in the product there too. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they do a good job, and when yeah. when you have a niche interest like we do, we want to be engaged with it. We want to be immersed in it as much as possible, right? And so there is no like functional 
like Warhammer Discord where we can talk to people right. in Games Workshop right. or whatever. Uh, but we're all on our own different social media platforms. But as far as like what is happening, what's leading the way for Warhammer content, I think Warcom does a fine job. It's yeah. you know you're not you're not going there for like great tactical analysis or no. or any uh, you know the the whole meta watch thing is is kind of you know a joke every time it goes out uh though i you know i still read it i still think that there are good points in there and there's interesting stuff even it's interesting though, seeing like the 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 graph that shows like where everybody's success rate where right the, armies the, the one you, and, you know the one thing i have a problem <laughs> i have with like meta watch is that the interviews they do with the players are all so heavily edited yeah. probably by of the course, same person or the same team that they all have the same voice right yeah and that that does bug me. And I know that they're sanitizing everything every, everybody says on that show because, you know, at the end of the day, Warhammer is a family product, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Don't like, let the blood and but, skulls fool you. But <laughs> you, you, when you like go on like Goonhammer or something and you read interviews with people there where it's their voice, right? And then you get to the extremely sanitized Warcom stuff. Uh, it's, mm, I don't like I that think part. That- well, I think I think that that particular line of articles doesn't offer something that really the rest of the community is not providing anyway. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, I think like Josh and I, you know, I went up to to play on tabletop and played a game up there. And got you did great <laughs> Hell yeah. for rolling a bunch of twos. I did fantastic. Story. Love it was love it was rolling not, twos. It was not just my dice. It was best number my to roll strategy and all that. But anyway, um, I don't want to blame the dice. But when your opponent is apologizing to you for your dice, you're at least like, well, I've got a little <laughs> problem here. But but my point was, you know, I came back from that trip. <clears throat> Josh and I had talked previously about do we want to do battle reports and i was like no i don't really want to do them and josh was like well i think we could do something different and i came back from that and i was like i really don't want to do (laughs) battle reports like that's a lot of work and you know they're doing it like we wouldn't provide something that new to the community i think in that regard um so i mean i feel like you get that analysis dan from other sites you get it from Mm -hmm. goonhammer you get it from other locations where maybe frontline you know where they're giving you some information about the tournament scene and how things are performing and Mm -hmm. unedited the greater community has built the community that it felt it needed because it didn't exist before right right? yeah Yeah. there's but what warcom can do that nobody else can do is Preview preview is yeah. Yeah. talking with designers, talking yeah. with painters, talking with the people that 100%. the other communities don't have access to. And to their credit, they do yeah. that. And yes, very so, much. so that's like, that's what I want from them is the you know inside information. You know what it's kind of put in, inside into information is, is for the most part is like, remember you used to get all those potato photos of yep. like leaks yes. and yep. like, mm-hmm. like for the most part, that's a dead that's a dead approach because yeah. work 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 on will just like be like here's here's what's coming yeah, <laughs> yeah. which is fine that's yeah. all i wanted to so know what, here here is. what's coming yep. i mean logging in to Warcom after a big preview at you know at warhammer <laughs> like, world or at nova or adepticon that's it's like it's christmas good. morning yeah yep. it's, it's great like, oh my yes. god yeah. what are we gonna see this Get time high resolution Let's photos go. you can look at you this gonna cost me yeah, we got LVO. We got LVO coming up this month, and there's going to be a preview. And boy, howdy! That Thursday morning, I'm going to be pumped to. I will tell you center what, click they, on Warcom. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you that, Dave, much, boys. Dave and Jake and and Josh and I kind of talked about that. And after that LVO release, I was like, Phew, my wallet. Oh safe yeah, no, for the most it's part. definitely be like yeah. the you know, it's the Facebook like marked safe from. It's like marked safe from the Death <laughs> yeah. preview event or whatever. <laughs> Right, we yeah. should make I, that mark safe from <laughs> Warcom is like really GDP good at preview. at curation and the occasional inside view. Yes, like when they curate, yeah. like here's some paint jobs from around the community, and that actually is community. You know, it's I really like it that. Is, Not and and by the way, Campbell, I was excited to see you up there. I called you out on our show for being. I, up I there. saw like when your when your model got shown up there. I was when, very excited when I woke up you. that morning and my phone's like, how many notifications do I have? Uh, no one hits me up. Who's hitting <laughs> up at eight a.m. Like. Somebody died or, oh, I got featured on that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and I, like, I'm not trying to toot my own horn here, but like I like it when they do that because 
I, sure. It's like, yeah. okay, cool. I see someone else from Goonhammer up there. And it's like, all right, cool. I saw when they were painting that. It's cool to see it here. Like, it's it's like seeing your friend's work in White Dwarf or whatever. But then it's like, yeah. oh, yeah, who's for sure. this yeah. random community member who I don't know? Or who's this YouTuber or nano celebrity micro influencer or whatever who I don't really follow? And it's cool to see that stuff out We've there. We've seen Colin Ward up there, up there a number of times. Because oh, yeah. he does yeah. great work. Like, I love it for yes, that. He does. And I think when they do have <laughs> interviews and like the actual like insider design stuff, that is fascinating fascinating because yeah. like yeah. think about the sisters of battle or the cities of sigmar uh both of those ranges where it was like had a multi-part design diary where they were like here are some run renders early on yeah. here's kind of the logic behind it it's actually the same thing i really liked when they did uh the old voxcast youtube podcast thing mm -hmm. where they would interview yeah. like john blanche designers and yeah. he would just hang yeah. out there and just draw it was terrible audio but it was beautiful to watch or they'd hang out with uh yeah. like max village and he would talk about why they design transfer sheets the way they do like having that insider information is amazing and is the kind of thing that warcom is great yeah. at showcasing when it showcases it i understand you can't do that all the time jess good goodwin has stuff to do <laughs> Yeah, people are actually working right. here. <laughs> uh, I know when they launched it, they're like, we're talking about maybe doing upvotes and community comments and forum threads. And I'm so yeah, glad they that. didn't do that because yeah, like, I don't no, think it was we don't face, that. Uh, the Warhammer Facebook pages are really great when I want to collect content to do, to do dramatic <laughs> readings of and read their comments in silly voices because people are absolutely unhinged like absolutely feral unhinged you know what though in general i think people oh. have a very positive oh, yeah. response in there but then every well, now and then thing. you get somebody... most people very positive so but yeah. the kind of people who are like furiously writing novellas on facebook comments they're never going to be positive about anything they're always going to say yeah. something crazy yeah. Yeah. and on a good day the warcom team does a uh, little clap back and that's always very funny to see yeah sure. i i do find that very funny yeah. no yeah. Uh, warcom love all right well, listen, based on time, let's take a, a short break. We're going to come back, and then, uh, Josh, you'll get to lead the second part of the discussion here. All right. All right, and we're back, and uh, Josh, take it away, man. Yeah, so we're going to kick off the next topic here, and this is kind of – we've touched on this a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Was that grip Hold or on, rip? Dan's opening another beer. Hell yeah, dog. A <laughs> little bit of grip, a little bit of rip. A little calm Let's go, a, baby. Little calm B. All right. Well, we're going to start with Dan with this one for uh, gripping and ripping freshly here. But knowing that point changes are coming every few months with the balance data slate updates, etc., is this affecting your hobby at all? Are you not playing games before an update drops, knowing that things are going to change? Or is it making harder for you to plan out your hobby? Like if you're building towards a list, knowing that the list is going to be modified, anything like that. Let's let's hear your thoughts here, Dan. Hell yeah, Carl. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. I saw that coming, Carl. Let <laughs> that breathe. Asa hi. There you Ooh, go. Japanese, dry lager. Japanese there you go. Beer. Okay, yeah. so the answer to that, does it change how I hobby? No. Because I am first and foremost a paint what is cool to me hobbyist, right? Uh, so the stuff that I want to play with is the stuff that I'm going to play with Re regard. I'll figure out, a listen, I'll figure out a way to get strike into any list. All right. I know he's not the best, <laughs> but he's going to be in there and he's going to be the warlord because that's how I play. Right. So no, no, I, I mean, I just planned out my Nova uh, list and that's, what is it? February now that's uh, seven or eight months away. Right. right. So uh, I'm, I'm not changing what my plans are because of points updates and stuff. If things get updated, things get updated. I'll roll with it. I've got a backlog of things that I can throw into the army if I need to. Uh, I mean, I have entire cases full of, uh, full of display cases, full of models to use for this. So no, no, it's not, I'm not going to change that. Am I going to not, not play a game uh, before changes are about to drop? Absolutely not. Listen, I have a very young child, okay? I can't get away to play games. I have to schedule things in advance for the most part. So if I schedule a game, believe me, brother, I'm playing that game. It's happening. Right? I, don't, I don't, yeah. And and if points or changes are going to drop tomorrow, so be it, right? That's that's just how it is. Uh, so no, for me, it's just moving forward with this, painting the stuff I want to paint, playing when I can, and just keeping it going. And if things change, things change. Uh, fortunately, for so far in 10th 
things haven't been like crazy changes. We haven't seen yeah. anything go nuts, right? Uh, I mean, unless you're playing, there's Eldar. the hyperbolic changes. I think we saw were, were Eldar. Right. Yeah, we saw some pretty right. Well, I mean, which good which changes. Were yeah, yes. fully, it could go harder. Fully deserved. Honestly. But like, it's it's not like I'm rolling up and then like suddenly my army doesn't work, right? It just it hasn't worked like that, right? So no, for me, I'm still moving forward. Fantastic. What about you, Campbell? Planning is for chumps. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just vibe with it. Yeah. We're in a living yeah. game. Things are going to change every six months. Not every three months at this point. So every six months generally, which is good. Like, three months is too fast. Six months feels just right. Uh, I remember. Four years feels too I, long. Yeah, I mean, I remember. Ten years, Necrons, Dark Eldar? <laughs> Dark Eldar and Necrons, eight, like nine, ten years and so on. And I'm telling so you. So, like. So the people who have joined from like seventh edition on, you have they don't to know. Yeah, you, they don't know how bad yeah, it was. You joined before You're the fire fresh hose. Spring child. <laughs> yeah, right. But like, good rules come and go. Uh, but good models are forever, largely because they're made of plastic and they'll never mm, degrade. Like what a what I a like that. saying right yeah. there. Pal. I like that. Put that That's on a t-shirt. t-shirt for yeah. you TM 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 and lose some money on your. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like. I'm I'm painting a gladiator right now because gladiators are good. By the time I got around to painting my, also though, more importantly, they look cool as hell. Like when I painted that Repex, Repulsor Executioners weren't good anymore. I painted because it, it was cool. I think I even started it when it was still good. I met someone who recognized me because they saw my Repulsor Executioner in a Goonhammer article about how bad the Repulsor Executioner is. But I still ran with it because it looks cool. Like, just vibe with it. You know, if you spend the whole time worrying about what happens next, you're not going to enjoy what's happening now. So, like, oh man, Campbell's just a fountain of wisdom right now. It's too dropping too he got, Yeah, you get Campbell. Yeah, Campbell, you're dropping just, some knowledge. Did you get that second one from therapy? Because that sounds like a. <laughs> I'll go back, but uh, my notebook is pretty full of uh, from our sessions. That was amazing. No, this is what a seven percenter gets that, you on I'm empty not stomach. Even <laughs> you're you're, <laughs> you're uh you got I, your I completely is gonna miss i complete <laughs> it's like a jack nicholson joker you know you could shoot in the mirror behind him you know it's the same thing yeah. oh, wow. through the through the beer can over his shoulder hit the cat i did not I hit love the cat it. She's i'm getting a little crazy <laughs> she's an angel uh, I, I actually agree with ev- everything campbell said there and especially when you're somebody like me who uh y- you know it comes in fits and starts, right? Like once I build some momentum, then it's just like, yo, keep riding it out. Yeah. Just do whatever you got to do to keep riding this momentum train. Uh, so for me, like, listen, I play what I'm going to play. And, and you know, I just talking about that play on tabletop thing. Occasionally I go back and I look at the comments under the, uh, under the, <clears throat> the uh, video. And several people have called out, hey, this thousand sons player doesn't know how to build a list. This list is terrible. I'm like, listen, I sent my list in advance of here's I want to bring this showcase of different units like how are they going to work together I don't I don't know (laughs) I don't I don't know I don't care it'll look cool you know it's gonna have a bunch of variety yeah it's very rare that I'm putting together something that's so dependent upon a change that's going to happen I I think the closest I come to it is right now I'm painting towards a 2000 point black legion list if that changed a little bit okay but the list is so varied like i would be able to shift something or not you know so for me that i'm not a tournament player either so i'm not chasing that like next i just i just want to say like the you can not be a tournament player and still go to tournaments Mm -hmm. so campbell Mm -hmm. and i Mm -hmm. are definitely not tournament players we're not like competitive players or something but we found that going to tournaments and playing in tournaments is some of the most rewarding activities you can do even as a somewhat casual player uh, you meet new new people all the yeah, time at that and kind of thing. you yeah. just get reps in you learn about the game and uh here's a secret that a lot of people might not know especially people who don't go to events is that the people that go to events are generally pretty cool oh yeah and, yeah without like, a doubt without like, a doubt so every now and then you'll run into a stinker but i mean that's real every, life too yeah. right that's anywhere yeah. So you go to an event, you play somebody. Uh, I had out of at Nova Open out of the eight games we played, I had one player that I probably wouldn't play Same. again. Yeah. And but yeah. the rest of them, I would definitely hang out with. Uh, yeah. In in the future, uh, and, because and let me be clear, cool. like my my statement has nothing to do with whether tournament player tournaments are for you or not. I mean, it's you know, it's simply like I am not 
so tied to a particular point value or something that I need to worry about. It is really my point. You like playing tournament? I like playing. Josh and I played the uh, the uh, Adeptus Titanicus tournament. That was like the first tournament I played. Yeah, the one at Adepticon too. Yeah, yeah, the one where yeah. doubles. Yeah, it was yeah. Great. I was I, I was in the room and it was awesome. Before. Yeah, that was yeah, we, yeah, we were that was we great. were in the the Necromunda event in that's the right. next yeah. row of tables <laughs> over. Yeah, yeah that's that right. Fun. We kept walking over. Yeah. That was great. Curtis, we had a great time. Kills. Yeah, yeah, super fun. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And we met some great people. I mean, it was it was super I, fun. It was super fun. I'd never, I'd never. Let me just be clear. I'd never talk poorly about playing in a tournament. Like there was my time where I was doing it and and regular, and now I just like. I can set up enough open games at an event like that that I don't need to get into um, the Well, there's just so many, so, so much discourse about tournament players, right? And everybody has a certain picture of a certain type of person. Oh, in yeah, their it head that's when not they hear true. That. Yeah. yeah, and so like a lot, a lot of times, you know, you got to define terms and uh, yep. you, like you have to speak to the reality of the situation uh, because you know there's the people's perceptions of people who've never been to a tournament and exist in a certain certain spaces in the hobby uh community are going to hear tournament player they're going to think oh like a win at all costs it like jerk has off a negative got, connotation like, to it yeah that's not at all that's not one, at all my experience one kit of like every army in in the game mm-hmm. and they're mm-hmm. uh you know that but that's not that's not reality so yeah, yeah just no. wanted, i mean just look I, I've, that s- I've said this before i i went um before I got into 40k, what I wanted to get into was model car racing. And I'd wanted to do it ever since I was a kid. I had the money to do it. I went and met that group of people who were racing. Like you had to get insurance for your car. <laughs> like it was it's a real thing. Like you have to join an organization. And they were not friendly at all. Like not friendly at all. I, I got into 40k and I started meeting people. I was like, Oh yeah, these people are super friendly. Like it was met a bunch of know, nice no. men and on I the And I was internet. playing tournaments. Here we are. I, I met well, Josh, you and I didn't meet at a tournament, no. but but we ran into each other at tournaments. But I met some, some of the people I still know today. I met at tournaments and played. Oh, sure, and yeah, it's great. Also, like, there's nothing. I mean, the, okay. the 40k badcast wouldn't exist without Campbell and I going to yeah. a tournament and meeting. This is so. <clears throat> that's true. So I'm, I'm going to bring this one home. And the reason that I was curious about this is because I was thinking more along the lines of edition changes, like where a new edition is announced and people just stop playing the current edition. You're like, ah, like fifth edition is a great example of this because there was three missions. Mm-hmm. We played it over and over again. And at the end of fifth edition, nobody wanted to play fifth edition knowing six was around the corner, even though nobody liked sixth. Um, so I was just curious on that one. Uh, I am in too many games. Like I, I am officially playing too many games. Old world is definitely tipping me over that edge here of having just too many games that I'm playing in. So for me, I do need a plan. If I'm planning for an event like Adepticon or something like that, um, I, I do need to plan a list so that I can actually execute painting, knowing that I'm painting five different systems at the same time. Um, so yeah. I, I was just curious to hear your thoughts and I'm not surprised by the answers here. Uh, just with the, with the group of guys that we got together. So I mean, I'm definitely coming from a place of privilege since I've got enough stuff painted that I can kind of work stuff around. Like if I only had, if only I only had 2000 points <laughs> on the dot of Templars painted points changed the day before a tournament. And I suddenly at 1870, I'm You're hosed, hosed. Yeah. but that is such a, that's a niche situation. I think. Uh, And on to the point that I just brought up about being in too many games, let's jump on to the next topic here, which is with two (laughs) brand new game systems. What's old is new again. Yeah. Yeah. New quote, quote uh, games (laughs) released from games workshop in quick succession. We've got legions of Imperials and the old world Uh, is it, it's, it, it is actually impossible to keep up with all the releases across every system. Um, How are you guys choosing what not to pursue? And is it harder to find games of what you are most excited for knowing that there's so many games out there? And this is including non GW for those games that excite you. Uh, Why don't you kick us off Dan again? Well, when you got, when you got little kids, uh, (laughs) you have to, you have to be very careful with your time. So for me, uh, Unless a new game is like exactly what I want in a game, I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to get into it because I just don't have the time to do so. I have a full-time job. I have a podcast of my own that takes a lot of my time. Uh, I have a family. I have friends. Like I, I can't do everything. So I stick with the games I play unless something new comes out that blows my socks off. So the last new game I picked up was song of ice and fire. And I picked that up before I had a kid. Uh, so my kid is almost two now. So in the last two ga- two years, I haven't picked up anything new. I've actually dropped 
games. Like I'm uh, even before Aeronautica Imperialis was uh, taken out back and shot, I, I decided I wasn't going to play it uh, just because I mean, maybe I would paint a couple here and there just for fun. But do you have, just, do you have any of the uh, the Imperial Guard uh, planes floating around? <laughs> you want to get rid of Dan? <laughs> uh, I, I do. We can talk about that, Carl, Let's maybe talk. after the show. Yeah, I might uh, need some. <laughs> Yeah, I, I so like to to me it's it's unless the game is great and it's everything I want from a game, I'm not going to get into it because I already have a bunch of established game systems going, uh, and that's that comes down to time management, right? Like you you have to realize as a hobbyist that you only have so much bandwidth, uh, and uh, you can't just do everything even though you you want to. Would I like to play the old world and? Age of Sigmar and and everything else. Yes, absolutely. It could be a ton of fun, but the reality is I can't. So I've got to trim somewhere, and that's fair. Is your local group yeah, playing I'll, I'll, more games that you are not, that, and you're having a harder time finding those games, or is it really just your bandwidth is so limited right now that you, you can only play what you can play, and people are happy to play with you? As a Z-list podcast celebrity, Josh, <laughs> as you probably well know at this point, <laughs> uh, my local group kind of is I, I just know enough people that I can get a game of what I want to yeah. play like pretty much at will. Right. So like if I want to play blood bowl, uh, you know, I know a ton of people that play blood bowl. If I want to play song of us and fire, I know a bunch of people that play that. If I want to play 40 K, I know a bajillion people that play 40 K. So for, and this is obviously coming from a place of privilege for sure, but it's, like my local game group does there, there's not really that i also live in a major metropolitan area uh there's like six million people here in the dc area so like like and there's a lot of people that play games right uh so it's it's not that's not my reality having a local local game group that i rely on to play certain games yeah i'll i'll piggyback off of what dan has said and and, and i agree i mean i've <clears throat> often said you know time's the only only commodity we can't get back any of right so uh for me my time is is valuable even though i'm not working right now uh when i was working i had even even less time that being said um and and i'm glad dan called out we're all speaking from a place of privilege here where it's like we have so many games and so many choices it's insane um with my wife who just walk behind me uh getting into board games and stuff i've been playing more board games with her because you know she's my partner in life and and so i want to spend my time doing that but additionally you know uh, the community here around us for horus heresies pretty much dried up i'm not really interested in pursuing it any longer either the reasons i was in it kind of don't really exist anymore for me so i've kind of I'm, I'm finding myself backing out of games and narrowing my scope of games that i want to play 40k will always be on that list um uh, uh necromunda i very much enjoy as well stupid legions imperialis because of josh <laughs> which i had sworn up and down i wasn't going to do but it, it is really cool <laughs> and uh so you good. know that feeds well into the and it, it and it feels well into the adeptus titanicus stuff that i had i mean those are kind of the core things i'm playing right now i have an age of sigmar sigmar army too really if you count my demons but I'm, we're not really playing age of sigmar anymore even though i think it's a pretty good system and it's just i'd rather play 40k if if i could get a 40k game in the <clears throat> I, th I will say the one exception to that i have a bunch of battlefleet gothic stuff i'm never playing battlefleet gothic system is is awful i mean i know people love it but it's dated and awful um but i will say if they release uh um more time uh more time I'm, really? I'm in and and again because i also feel like that's like a it's low yeah, impact it doesn't model a very low investment in terms of number of models and what i'm gonna do and i've got terrain that i could yep. already run a more i think if I, I think if they released more time i'd be in too yep. mm -hmm. it's yeah it's yeah it was a great system and i think with a modern take on it, it if it be, got modernized oh yeah fantasy Done. necromunda Done. one book in <laughs> i'm in yeah i'm in in 100 yeah. percent I may even like if I could track down the old rules, which are impossible to find, you know. But you could get an MPDF somewhere. Yep. You know, I would, I would even be willing. They to had try such it. a cool supplement at one point for Mordheim called Empire and Flames, which was like Mordheim games but outside, and it was mm -hmm. like all built uh, around like the story of like the Beastmen rising up. Oh, how interesting! And like raiding towns and stuff, and 
uh, that was because the Beastmen weren't really involved in Mordheim yeah. itself in the hunt yeah. for the warp stone or whatever in uh, in in Mordheim. Uh, I, I remember playing games of Empire and Flames, which you could use like your regular Warhammer fantasy battles terrain for right. because you know, your little cottages and your little right. gates and stuff on your grass field or whatever, because it was Mordheim, but outside. Yeah. Uh, I, man, I remember playing that. That was so much fun. So, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd totally be down with that. But I mean, to, to to sum up and just to really answer your question, I mean, the reality is I'm narrowing the scope of games I'm playing with 40K being at the top of that heap. And um, and it is impossible to keep up with the releases. Uh, you know, and, and I heard this long before, uh, like right as Age of Sigmar was launching, I was talking to people at Games Workshop when I was over there and and their literal response was, if you think it's coming fast now, just wait. Yeah. And, he, and you, people are not going to be able to keep up with it. Like they knew yeah. people would not be able to keep up with it. So that's me. I feel. And so I got a quick follow up for Carl before I come over to you, Campbell, sure just could. out of curiosity. Um, Legions of Peril specifically, knowing that a bunch of us locally are in that and loving it and g- going to be spending a lot of time on the hobby and gameplay of that. Is that a, was that a big influence of you joining that or just the yeah, general absolutely. Excitement? Like, absolutely. Okay. No, absolutely. Like that was the thing that sold me. I look, all these guys that I like are playing it. I want to play it too, to be with you guys. And, and it, the models are so cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look at those little, little rhinos and you're like, look how cute they are. Guys. They're irresistible. Yeah, exactly. Little- and, Campbell, and little guys. again, we, we mentioned this on, on, on the stream with Dave and Jake, uh, the, the battle report in white dwarf yeah. and, and the battle report that they did on, uh, on the Warcom thing. I, I looked at both of those and I was like, Oh, Oh no. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I, I do part not want to go like, part group. I don't, just the excitement. I will really probably only play with you guys. Like, I'm not going to go whole hog and buy a bunch of terrain for it and that kind of thing. Like, we have a bunch of. Yeah. You've got Titanicus it, it, terrain. You know. You're good. <clears throat> We're good. You got Titanicus terrain and a 3D oh, anyway. printer. Done. Cool. Okay, Campbell. So that's why I got into it. Cam- Campbell. <laughs> if something doesn't hit me like an absolute lightning bolt, I'm not touching it. Like, yeah. there's too much out there. I've, I've even scaled. I've even scaled down my board game oh, like purchases yeah. Yeah. now. Like, I'll see things and I'm like you know what i got a lot of games to play already like okay. how many board games do you have unplayed how many games in your steam library are unplayed how many models are still in the shrink wrap in the closet <laughs> like i don't mean to introduce this existential threat to all of you but you know speaking yeah. from my own experience here why would you bring any yeah, of this right? hit me right uh, in the well, field okay. <laughs> i plan on living a long time despite the best efforts of everything around me and i know i have more things i want to do in my life than i will plausibly be able to do before i die so i want to make sure they're the things that make me the most excited and that is going to be this army here this army there so like i wasn't really planning on starting a new, new age of sigmar army because i liked my slaves of darkness i liked my stormcast but then uh campbell you're darkness, what uh but then um again i'm trying not to have too many hyper inscrutable like cross podcast things here but then cities of sigmar came out and that is just that's oh, that, so that's, so, that's mine. so that's so me though. i i can't not i had to and i've got a army on the way like i'm working on them like half heraldry got, alone i know the heraldry the color schemes the like the just realistic enough stuff to it i adore it like but spoke yeah, it's an army that spoke you, yeah. to me, so I went with them instead of like a lot of other armies where I'm like, eh, it's kind of cool, I could play it. But also, I know I have, well, I had to paint it for Goonhammer, so that I kind of had that little like incentive there, but I know I have people to play with here. Like, I know I have an Age of Sigmar community here. I know I have a 40k community here. I have a Battletech mm-hmm. community here. So like, those three games, I'm golden. Like, I'm happy to play them. But like no one here plays 30k and since 8th edition I haven't had much interest in 30k so my ultramarines they've my 30k ultramarines sorry I have too many ultramarines armies have stayed in the box ever since and but if my local community was really hard into 30k and like want to do legions imperialis and all that stuff I'd probably get into it just because gaming with other human beings especially people I really like is more important than any specific rule set but when the rules are good it makes that interaction a little easier. Yeah, Campbell, you, you threw an offhand joke in there about, you know, I have more stuff than I can do before I die. And this will probably not resonate with many of our younger listeners, but the reality is, you know, 
and I've talked about it before, we lost Josh and I lost a very good friend this year, last year rather. And um <clears throat> you know, I, I'm I'm not a spring chicken myself. I'm I'm fifty three. And, you know, as, as I start looking at like mortality and that becomes more prevalent in, in my thinking, I'm like, what am I doing with my time? Like we, we only have so much time on this, on this planet. And, and if you're young and you're listening to this, it, it, I sound like an old guy, I know, you know, but man, dude, you're going to take it all for granted. And someday you look back and you go, what the hell happened? You know, I still feel like I'm just out of high school, you know? Like, no, Carl, Carl, I'm 39 and I feel the same way, right? I, this is something well, that you got I, it early. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, but like, well, I mean, I see my, my, my kid and I'm like, yeah. uh, what's important to me? What, what is, what is, what matters now? It's been a very big, and you I mean, you, your, your kid is much older. Yeah. So yeah, they're like, graduating college next year. So you, you've, you've had these thoughts uh, a mm -hmm. while ago. Uh, so, but for me, you know, it's still new. And, and so you got to think about, you got to plan your time. You got to think about like what matters. And, and I know that at the end of the day, these, these games we play, like when you stack them up against a lot of other things, they're, they're not all that important. Right. But at the same time, like my social circle, my community, the people I love that are outside yeah. of my family are part of this community. Right. So it's, yeah. is something important. It is something that we all want to spend a lot of time. Yeah. On. I don't want to devalue. I think it is yeah. important. If it brings you happiness and it brings you joy, like do it, yeah. Yeah, do it. Absolutely. And, and, yeah. and don't, and do it unabashedly. Like do not, do not apologize for it. Like, you know, I, I know people that are like, Oh, well, I can't let people know at work that I'm a <laughs> closeted nerd or something, you know? And I'm like, and I, I turn 30, you won't care, care anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in yeah, Silicon Valley. Valley. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, care. the funny thing is, is when you when you are actually open about like gaming and 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 all this stuff is like you oh, people find, actually ask you questions. People ask it. you questions, and you can like make new friends yep. and find and Dude, get people into we, it. We like we threw a uh, don't hide yourself. 50, we 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 threw a belated fiftieth birthday party here at my house, uh, and and. Uh, uh, you know, I had people, I had a real mix of people like George Costanza's and Seinfeld. Words are colliding, Jerry. <laughs> you know, I, had pe I had people from work. I had our neighbors over. We had my close gaming friends. I had other friends. Everybody kind of came, came over. And even the people at work who knew I was like in this, this was some of the first times like they were at my house and they came into the game room and people were like, oh, well, let me show you what Carl does. And I'm already, I'm drunk. Like I'm in another part of the house. <laughs> yeah, drunk. And they're like coming in going, oh my God, like, how do you, uh -huh. how do you play this? How do you, you know, it, they didn't have like, oh, look at this. They had more little questions about like, this is yeah. fascinating. There's hearing yeah. about it and then so, there's yeah. seeing the Astronomicon and all and that entails and like the two, two very yeah. different things. People <laughs> clock when you uh, care about stuff. Show. Yes. Oh, for sure. Yes. Yeah. If you're passionate about something and people people care about you, like they want to yep. know more about passion it. plays. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, there's another T-shirt for Cam. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, we got to we got to get Campbell a bunch of message T-shirts. Remember those message memes right. that were back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to get a bunch of those yeah. with uh, right. cats and uh, inspirational quotes. Yep. Uh, okay. Love it. Uh, next topic, and we're going to start with Campbell on this one. Is Game Workshop's production schedule getting in its own way? With so many games, armies, models, etc., and so many models out of uh, stock, so there's the range, and then there's what's actually available, are they actually getting in their own way? Like, are they, Have they stretched themselves too thin? Remember what I said about the old world? Like, There's no way they can support three huge army range games plus all the other specialist games like there's no way I, I think i heard some scuttle about that like they're opening a new factory and like great cool maybe they'll be able to scale into it a bit better but yeah, i heard but that how rumors. often are things you want out of stock how many terrain kits have you been like oh that's cool oh they don't sell that anymore it's been scrubbed from the internet they stopped selling thermic plasma conduits in 2019 so sucks to suck i guess no when your goal is infinite growth year after year forever you're eventually going to hit a critical mass that's unsustainable and that's capitalism 101 baby <laughs> like yeah. cool yeah what's interesting is is i've never worked in like i've always worked in the software or service industry right like internet service providers or software where it's not really a like oh you need more storage yeah, yeah. that's not an issue <laughs> like we're not going to run out of 
you know, I remember when I worked for Yahoo Mail, right? And and Gmail was like, oh, we have unlimited storage. And at Yahoo, you know, we were like, oh, we need to do this as well if we're going to stay competitive. Okay, how do we do it? All right, we're just going to buy a bunch of storage arrays. And, you know, we'll, we're just going to invest in that. Okay, you know, and it, was, it wasn't like we were manufacturing something. I've never been on like that side of business. I would say the answer to your question is yes. Like they are... They are overstretched. I've heard that rumor too, as well, yeah. Campbell, about a new factory, and 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 I hope so because otherwise they're going to need to. They will have to change their m- mode and offshore some of this stuff that they're not doing. And I know they don't yeah, want to no. do that. It feels um, like they're just. Oh, sorry. And, and, no, I was just going to say I, the the fact that, <clears throat> and I made this point to Josh earlier. Like when Leviathan launched, cool. I'm a new player. I, I buy Leviathan. I'm finally getting into Warhammer 40k. I, I want to play Tyranids. Oh, you know what? Okay, I've I've got this all assembled. What do I get next? Oh, I I can't buy it. It's mm-hmm. it's out of stock. Yeah. To this day, Carnifex is. Oh, I mean, the six months on either side of Leviathan. Good luck getting anything, because like yeah. you it was yeah. you could kind of feel the pinch. And I know they did. A yeah, bunch. you could feel the yeah. pinch where you'd be like, why are Eradicators out of stock or whatever? Why are they still out of stock? It's because all the production is going into Leviathan. That's not really like a tinfoil hat thing. That's just a. And I no, it's they've come out and say that, but, but at a certain point that I think that speaks to the oversubscription. And do you guys feel like we're on the verge of that tipping point that Campbell brought up or that we're already there? Like when we're not on the precipice where we're in it. I think, I think we're there there. manufacturing wise. The fact they're still designing (laughs) as much as they are. That is fascinating to me like the fact they're able to still keep fat keep yeah. putting new stuff out as often as they are new rules new lore new designs uh new models that they don't tend to make enough of like that is actually surprising they're able to keep up with that because i thought it was going to be like the fire hose blasts and then oh well there we go we we, we shot it we're out of stuff it trickles uh, off but no they've kept it up i also i also know that the pandemic in the manufacturing stuff and shipping around the pandemic has caused we're still oh, dealing yeah. with the ramifications of that. Right. And yeah. they are too. And that's fine. Yeah. You know, but, but yeah, I think they're oversubscribed. And now let's hear the uh, controversial Dan? take from Dan. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, actually I, I, okay. So in my day job, I do sound for a financial services company. Uh, I do not have a CFA, but I listen to CFAs talk about businesses and companies literally all day long. Uh, so grain of salt, but Let's talk about Games Workshop. What's a CFA, Dan? Uh, is Certified Financial Advisor. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about Games Workshop as a company real quick. So Games Workshop is a publicly traded company up in uh, England uh, who has their entire existence been allergic to debt. So you look at a modern public company, and most of them have a good amount of debt on their books. Right, Because when you make money, when you have money, banks are very, very willing to give you money uh, to spend and to do stuff with uh, it, that, that the banks will earn interest on. Right, So Games Workshop does not do that. They do not leverage themselves. They ha- own their own production facilities. They do not outsource their production facilities. They outsource bookbinding and printing. <laughs> they don't own a printing shop, uh, but that's it. They have outsourced they, some they, terrain. They some did plastic. outsource some terrain, some terrain plastic. Kits, I, but, yeah, I was, but they but they brought that all back in. Yeah, I was I was gonna get there, and you can tell Sorry. some of those old uh, old plastic stuff is different yeah. uh, quality than the the game the the stuff that we're used to from Games Workshop. Uh, so this is a company that does not work like most companies work. It's they're very interesting in that. Uh, so uh, the question is, are they spreading themselves too thin? Are they in trouble? Are like no. and the answer is a resounding no, they're not. They yeah, yeah. are incredibly profitable. Yeah. You look at them, especially up to England, uh, which is having a ton of problems economically. A lot of their home companies are suffering because of their voluntary exit from the Eurozone. Games Workshop mm-hmm. is thriving they are making money hand over fist uh they gave their employees uh at least all their english ones i don't know if they gave their international employees they they gave them all bonuses yeah but they this last year they gave them all a a big bonus uh because they're making enough money where they can just hand cash out to their employees and if you have worked in a job ever in your life you know how hard it is for to you to you 
to get money from people just cause. All right. It ain't easy. They're making money. They're doing fine. Uh, like, sure. There are shortages like land raiders still out of stock. Uh, you know, like, there are Got shortages effects. for some of their stuff, <laughs> but like they, they are on a production schedule. So at one point in the last three months or so, I did get an email in the inbox about Land Raiders coming back in stock. Uh, they will do runs of stuff if they know that they will sell. So Carnifexes, yes, they're out of stock. They can't just only produce Carnifexes, right? Because they have so much else to produce. So they'll every few months they'll go into the backlog and uh, and say, "All right, we're going to produce this. We know this is going to sell, so we're going to make a few, right?" Uh, and that's they don't have to do anything else because they're still going to make money. Part of the manufacturing thing is knowing what to produce so it makes money. Right now, a lot of our big retailers, such as Target such as Walmart, uh, are recovering from something that they're calling shrink, right? In this last year, you look at a lot of these quarterly reports and they're talking losing a ton of money to shrink. Shrink is a word that covers a lot. A lot of people associate it with theft, but it's not just theft. Theft is actually a small part of shrink on these companies' balance sheets. The big part is that they made or bought the wrong stuff. The stuff that is in their warehouses, in their stores, that is not selling. Games Workshop does not have this problem. They are selling out all over the place across their ranges. Uh, it is not a situation where they, like, if they are going to open a third factory, it is a when they are going to open a third factory. They have the money to do it. From what I've heard, they're looking at land purchases in and around the Nottingham area to do so. Uh, again, grain of salt. I'm not an insider, or this is just hearsay. But the fact of the matter is, is they've got a ton of money. They have almost zero debt. Uh, and their production is flying off the shelves right now. Uh, they are very sophisticated on what they know will sell and won't sell. They've made mistakes in the past. They don't make those mistakes that much anymore. Uh, so, uh, yes. So let, is me, it, let me let me let me let me, let me, let me finish. Let yeah. me finish this one. This because then I'm yeah, almost yeah, go, done. Go. Is it is it going to be inconvenient for some people who are looking for, especially for older kits, to? to uh, uh, flesh out their armies. Yes, it is going to be inconvenient to do so uh, because it there is a finite amount of the things that they produce. Uh, but it's not a situation where that stress is going to cause that company any noticeable issues. Mm. I, I'm going to say you bring up a ton of great points and, and I was not trying to imply that I felt the company was in any danger. Like they're, they're clearly doing very right. well. Their yeah. financial statements and all that show that they're doing very well. That is not, <clears throat> that's not my point. I think my point is, I think they are missing out on some sales. Like I think they could be doing even better yeah. and, uh, and granted, I'm not in there. I don't know. What, what do I know about manufacturing either? What I do know is that Chaos Predators have been unavailable for six months. Chaos Land Raiders have been unavailable for six months. A vindicator you can't get. So if somebody's trying to start a new army right now of Chaos stuff, like my wife, <laughs> like we, we, we literally could not find some of these models. Josh was trying to track down an Eldar... What, what the anything the, the, fire prison the, the vehicle <laughs> the, the the fire prison forever you know and unless you're paying exorbitant markup prices yeah. on ebay like just not available and so so while, while i agree with uh, i actually agree 100 percent with what you just said dan um i think they're not in any trouble they're making scads of money they know it at a certain point though you have a point where you start to lose goodwill and frustration especially for newer players yeah. or even older players who are trying to start a new army. And then it becomes like a, well, forget it. I'll do something. I'll go play, you know, soy or get a, or game, get a third whatever. party 3d print something or other. Yeah. Well, okay. Or, so there, th or, or 3d print something. You, you do have an avenue to talk to games workshop in this for the products that you want to buy. And it's going onto the web store and clicking the email me button on the product you want to buy. Uh, that is a very good yeah, point. I guarantee really you that they are they are taking those clicks into account when they think, all right, what are we making this If month? it works. 
That is a really that is a really good point. Let me check. I was Hang logged on. in just today. Look, yeah, there's an something, email button right click there. Click the email. I was logged in, hit the email me button, and then it asked me to log in. I'm like, and just infinite loop of that. I know. But, um, the counterpoint I'm going to bring up <laughs> to uh, what Carl was just saying there is just it, as a luxury product, are they missing out on those sales? Are those sales just getting pushed down in time for three, four, six months, whatever? Um, now that there are more options, like this is, I think, absolutely more true of 15 years ago when there was less competition of in, in games, alternate models, 3D prints, etc. cetera. Um, I, I just, just curious on that one. If if you think they're actually losing sales or those sales are just getting kicked down, knowing that you're going to buy this in six months when it's available. So what's the rush? So I get new players. So that new email players thing is, just, just works. So sweet. I <laughs> just have worked for me. sort of a <laughs> supplemental a half counterpoint of when you go into a game store, let's say you, you want a Land Raider. Go into the game store. They don't have any Land Raiders. Yeah. You're already in the game store, though. Those predators look pretty good. Yeah. So, like, I mean, there is, there is, yeah, like there's still opportunity purchases. Point. Like, yeah. are some, I came here to spend, what does a Land Raider cost? hundred. <laughs> Fifty-five dollars. I think. I, I think Look last like year. Thing. I think last year in like October, I bought the last Land Raider on eBay for, <laughs> quite frankly, a ridiculous price. So, I, listen. I I know. I know the pain of not being able to buy the model you want to buy. You want to put in your army. I get yeah. it. I know it, and it does suck. But it, like you have you have to think like when Games Workshop is are they going to produce legacy kits that might sell? Or are they going to produce new kits that mm. will sell? Right. So, and like, you, and they're you also to, informed. They're also informed by how the how the tournament scene is doing. They 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 to a yeah. point. They don't have to a, a point, to a point because they anything. they plan they plan their production stuff out very far in advance, yeah. just yeah. like yeah. any manufacturing company does. Right. And and for games workshop like you know we talk about like competitors in the space sometimes games workshop has no functional competitor in the tabletop gaming space no, they're they competing don't. with video games they're competing with uh movies they're competing with other things to take up your time remember because... when they were competing with war machine no i don't <laughs> because they never were right yeah. like it's but that was like the potential up and comer and it's yeah. gone games workshop's like the nfl right yeah like the yeah, uf yeah. the ufl is new and is is spinning up this spring or whatever and i'm sure there's a ton of your listeners that have literally never heard of the ufl and honestly you don't need That's, to know anything about you're it. making your point though. but you're i think you're saying you're making it but up like the uf the, the ufl is going to start after the super bowl i think in march and mm -hmm. like and it, nfl is in no danger of of the ufl taking over no. just like uh, just X, like XFL uh, <laughs> games workshop is in no danger of cool mini or not taking over. Right. No, you know, no, absolutely. Uh, not. So like they're, they games workshop is they're beholden to shareholders and they're going to make money. That's what they're going to do. Right. So if Carnifex is, if land Raiders of that stuff, if they're, you know, they bring those back and they're going to sell a thousand of each right to the gamers that have been waiting, uh, however many months to buy them. Okay. That's fine. But in the meantime, you know, they're going to be pushing out new products and I'm not endorsed. Listen, this is not an emotional thing. This is just, this is how it works. I'm not endorsing no, this how is, this, this works. This is fascinating. Yeah. But like, <clears throat> like, like for like games workshop, are they stretching themselves too thin? I don't think so. They're at max capacity. Uh, and uh, like, they're going, they're going to grow. It's just, I mean, it's an, it's inevitable for well, one they're of the reducing few... their SKUs. I mean, like they're, they've removed models specifically, I think to reduce the number of SKUs they had, right. SKUs being the, the, yeah, the, the number product numbers. Yeah. 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 Right. Which I mean, so, which is good. Like trimming, trimming stuff yeah. that doesn't sell or doesn't, or doesn't sell well or whatever. Like that's good for a company because it, it's less overhead at that point. It's less storage. Yeah. It's less manufacturing. It's less, uh, just it's mm. just less money that's that they have point. to spend on upkeeping that stuff uh so like if you want something from games workshop if you want a product the best thing you can do is click that email me button and you will get an email about it i got an email about land interest. raiders yeah. i want to say month month and a half ago uh after i had gone to ebay and already bought it because i, I wanted it that bad right uh so it this that system does work and it does inform them on what to make and you will have to wait for it but 
you yeah. don't have another you know, option. The, it, so the interesting thing is it probably builds up to a degree some kind of um, urgency to buy those things too when they come out and then you run into. Yep. Yeah, so Absolutely. tell your friends so, if you want a certain product, tell your friends to click that shit too. Oh, I'm sorry, click go, that stuff go, too. Go scalp some Carnifexes. Three hundred fifty dollars <laughs> right. a piece. I on mean, eBay. nine of them for your friends. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they right. the whole great, scalping great points, Dan. The whole scalping thing is 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 kind of depressing, but it's it's what we deal with with the secondary yeah. market with e, with eBay and Facebook Marketplace and stuff. Like that's that's that's, that's the reality we live yeah. in. Great. That's some points yeah, I hadn't great considered. insights there. That's yeah. good stuff. So let's bring this home with the next topic here. Last question. Uh, this is kind of a follow up to question two, which was about the tenth uh, edition release. Um, so, how do you think 40k 10th edition is being received across the greater player communities? Is the excitement for the game still there in your local areas and or corners of the internet? And who is the most vocal about this? Is it casual gamers, tournament players, etc.? And part of the reason I bring this up is because probably because locally there are so many of us playing in so many different games right now. Legions of Imperialis, Necromunda, Old World, 40k, Age of Sigmar, etc. Um, that uh, locally we're just being pulled in so many different directions that I'm actually not hearing a lot of excitement for 40k itself. So I'm really curious to hear from you guys. Uh, so let's kick off with Campbell on this one. I have heard excitement from every corner of the community I can really think of. Most of the people I hear kind of decrying 10th edition are the people who wouldn't be happy if you gave them a free puppy and a crisp hundred dollar bill like and you know that's fine like you don't have to love everything but there were people like there's even people there's a person or two in my local community who was like they wrote their own homebrew rules which is just fifth edition again which is like okay that's all you ever wanted you only ever want fifth edition and that's fine you can like that have fun with it but we're bring fearless that. back <laughs> uh Oh, no, God. Anyway, oh, God. don't, don't yeah. even. <laughs> but the excitement I felt come from people has been at pretty much every end of every part of the community. Like I play in a very mixed group of people where aside from that one guy, it's a mix of competitive players it's a mix of narrative players, people who just play on Wednesdays to get away from you know the family for a night or whatever, like the whole shebang and all of them are really engaged with 10th edition they're reading like the paratextual material out there such as warcom goonhammer and so on they're keeping up with the faqs they're excited when new stuff comes out uh they you know they're, they're the people who are just like oh my god guys look at this new thing that's coming out and they're linking to a screenshot off reddit where i'm just like just go to warcom it's all there but <laughs> like you've got the whole yeah, gamut yeah. here i've got like people like dan and i hang out with with like scott and so on who are really keyed into the tournament scene who are pretty jazzed about it i've got friends out yeah. in jersey who are this little enclave of hyper casual beer hammer players who basically feel like the game dropped off after index hammer and eighth and they're so stoked about 10th that they went to nova last year and they're going again awesome. this year wow. awesome. because it's just that playable like there is this competitive sort of air about it for sure with things like meta watch and tournament win rates and so on like it's a really good competitive game right now i'll just be straight up but that isn't the whole thing and a lot of people are well aware of that so i feel that the clarity of the rules the consolidation of all the updates faqs and so on just the general accessibility of the app it's a very welcoming play experience and yeah, I've met some people who don't like it very much. Most of them are complaining very loudly because they're getting crushed. But uh, still, most people I've met who've played this game really like it. Listen, it was just that one time. <laughs> that, that was <laughs> it was my dice game. That was Nath actually. So <laughs> invalid. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I found very positive reactions across the whole community. I've met very few people who didn't think it was an improvement over ninth and tenth. I've met a, a again a few people are like, all right, uh, it's missing some wrong. of the texture, some of the flavor, <laughs> like uh, Josh you were saying with like shark shark on time. There's specific rules in there or whatever. But I feel, and I feel like a lot of other people probably feel similarly that some of that texture is sanded off for a much smoother, more even experience for all involved. Yeah. Dan, let me go next because mine's super short. And then Got, do you, it, man. Do your thing. It's your show. So uh, I, I hear what I hear what you're saying, Josh. Like we're playing a bunch of different stuff. Titanicus, Necromunda, eventually, uh, you know, Legions Imperialis and 40k and you know, board games. You know, here's the thing I would say. 
Um, we're not like hyper focused on Warhammer 40k like we used to be uh, anymore because we're playing all these different things. Um, but what I will say is, when we do play a game of 40k, we come away from it jazzed and like wanting to play again. You and I just played that Tyranid Marine game, That's and awesome. it was yeah. super fun, like super fun. And so, like, I'm looking forward to tomorrow playing Aaron with my demons because i know like every time i do that it gets me like okay i want to do this again you know um so i mean that's my take on it like i'm i'm very happy with the where where it sits right now uh you know i think it's fun more accessible than ever because ninth god it, it was just if people were like oh should i get into this i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> you know, no really wait it it's out. too late yeah. you know wait 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 for the next edition and i think it's going to be i think it is successful and i think it will continue to be successful so and i think it'll continue to get played in our group especially when we play a game and then people give me like oh shoot, yeah, shoot, that's sure. really fun i play a game <laughs> i play a ninth edition tournament and come home and be like cool i don't need to play for a month maybe i'll play battletech yeah. <laughs> when after nova or tacoma these last two like big events i did on the way home I'm building lists in the in like in the car. Like I'm just that excited to get playing. Yeah, that's again. A, at Nova. That's a different at yeah. Nova. Campbell and I yeah. were at the bar after our last games. Yeah, we're I, building lists. Yeah. We're, we were yeah, that, we were that, like that speaks yeah, volumes. I've never yeah. enjoyed yeah. building lists before. Building lists was a thing I had to do to put some toys on the table, and now it's that's fun. exactly like, how I feel. <laughs> yeah, the app does a lot to help that, with that too, for sure. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Carl, you made a great point, and you said the game is more accessible than ever, and it truly, truly is. With the technology integrated, with the ease of the rules, uh, and the just the the low levels of bloat that exist right now for for your rules, mm -hmm. like it is easier than ever to get a list going, to play a game, and to learn and understand what's happening in the game. Uh, and I think that translates all across the player base right you've got casual players who just want to play with their favorite models in their garage uh, over some beers with their friends having a great time and you've got tournament players who are able to uh you know deal with a ton of data and you know find out exactly what's working the best and what combo works the best uh and what matchup is the best and everything uh and they're all doing it at the same time in the same game uh, I think that right now is we're seeing a true renaissance of tabletop gaming. Every big event is bigger than every event before it yep. right now. Yep. This time at Nova, it was the largest Nova GT it has ever been. At LVO, largest LVO GT it has ever been. Uh, Adepticon's weird with 40K, so it might not be the same at Adepticon. But, but Adepticon uh, itself is right, cause rising tide. <laughs> bigger than it's ever yeah, been. Right now. Uh, I couldn't get into the hotel for the first time yeah, in a long same. time uh, I, for Adepticon. I'm in the satellite hotel, which is fine because that's where the soy games are, and I'm playing two days of that. So whatever. I, I'm a winner, it <laughs> turns out. Who would have thought? <laughs> but like every event is growing right you you look at the the gw events uh for their their gts or whatever people are going to those those events didn't exist uh four years ago and now people like uh I, i'm not sure they're selling out i don't think they're selling out but you're still getting hundreds of players going to each one of those right and those are new events in the continuum they're so, doing an old world yeah. event did you know that i did not know that that's fantastic wow. news yeah isn't that interesting like there has never been as much enthusiasm for tabletop gaming as there is right yeah. now. And uh, like, you can really feel it in the 40 K community. Uh, like I, I have been struggling to play 40 K because of my, you know, young kid at home and only have a couple hours a night to mess around and do my own thing. And so a whole 40 K game has not been in the cards, but with this last update, I am on the app constantly <laughs> reading rules doing points making lists just doing this stuff i am back in i am fully dragged back in uh and in my area there's tons of players who are just as hyped as i am to play 40k so that's awesome yeah that's awesome. so yes <laughs> while there are a ton of choices out there for for gamers who want to play different games and that's great i love the fact that there's uh, a bajillion games you can play right now, a bajillion tabletop games that are outside of the remit of Games Workshop. I think that's fantastic. I think that's healthy. I think that's good. And I think that, like, while Games Workshop doesn't have any true competitors <clears throat> in the war game space, 
they can still learn yeah. from those games. Yeah. And the more people that are playing those mm-hmm. games, the better Games Workshop games will yep. get. Learn from the design so, especially. Yep. So I think that we, we are in a true renaissance right now. I think we're luckier than we've ever been. Uh, the game is good. The game is fun. It is lightweight. It is easy. Uh, okay, lightweight <laughs> as as for as as lightweight as yeah. it gets, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but but it's it's never been better than it is right now. Uh, and uh, and I'm we, as excited about it now as I was when Eighth Edition first launched. Yeah. When Eighth Edition first launched, I was super into it. I mean, the the super. reindexing of Eighth was just such a great watershed, right? Yeah, like, smart. Yeah. It was so it, it was so much fun. Uh, I remember Nova uh, that year, 2017, was the first big event with the re-indexed yep. eighth. I do remember that. Yeah. And Campbell and I were uh, doing the narrative at Nova, and oh man, that was such yeah. a fun time! Like, uh, like j- everybody was on the same page basically because you had yeah. your index and you had three strats, and it was <laughs> go baby go! Like yeah. it was so much fun, and you come into tenth with another re-index and again nova was great nova was in the next big thing after the release of 10th yep. uh and you've got ev- pretty everybody's on index everybody's at the sa- except eldar players they're One playing extreme a different outlier, better game yeah. <laughs> yeah good good for them we 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 love you eldar players they keep shifting them down <laughs> but everybody's playing that index game and you could the, the i mean the excitement was palpable right and so the mm-hmm. codexes have been coming out and no codex so far has broken the game which that's the first i mean it's a right, it's yeah. a surprise yeah. honestly last time last like the marine codex came out in eighth and marines were the best by a country mile they were the yeah, best faction for a in while the game, right yeah. uh where whereas now we have what four or five codexes out for 10th and there's no real runaway from that mm-hmm. i i people are saying that necrons are uh are on the cusp of uh, unbeatable right now uh but Hear that, I, Josh? I, I don't know about that. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it, 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 Give but, them to me. I'll, play, I'll yeah. show you how they but get beat. Gonna, <laughs> I've done well. With them. Most of uh, none of us, and most of our listeners, if not all of our listeners, for both our respective shows, don't play in those circles where there's like unbeatable combos right. and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, because because for most people they don't exist. And while you can read Goonhammer and you can read the other websites and stuff and learn about these fantastic combos and these unbeatable lists and who's winning the tournaments or whatever. And that stuff is always going to get the most attention yes, because exactly. it's, because it's like, it's like sports, right? You want to know the winners. You want to know who's doing the best. Right. But for most of us, we're casual sometimes players of this game and we're just trying to have a good time. And in 10th edition, it's easier than ever to do. And making that. sure so I'm, I'm very clearly very bullish on 10th. making, making no, sure I'm, everybody I at the table is having fun too. Not just, Oh, I'm going to have fun crushing you. Uh, <laughs> right. And, and it's so, it's so easy to share yeah. lists. Right. Yeah. Like if yeah. Josh and I are going to play a game and I'm like, Hey, this is what I'm bringing. And I can just text it to you. I can copy paste on my yeah. app and text it over to you and you can read my list like, and perfect. think, Oh, counter, I was going to take these counter, guys, but that, they'll perfect. evaporate. <laughs> right. Right. You can get all your hard counters out there and, or, or we can like engineer, you know, you know, we talk about this on the badcast quite a bit is like, there's the conversation you get when you, you have, when you get to the table, right. Yeah. If you, especially if you don't know who you're playing, where it's like, like, you know, is this going to be like a, like a win at all cost game is this gonna be a casual game like what are we doing here what's what's going on uh because that that conversation isn't always apparent right now between friends who know one another you can pretty easily say hey carl i'm gonna come over let's play a relaxed beers and chill game or i can be like campbell i'm coming over i'm practicing for a gt so give me your good list you know what i mean right, right. Uh, and it's easy to just share that right now and i think that that makes the game just so accessible and and so it's so much easier to have a good time when you invest, you know, your three or four hours or whatever into the game. Uh, it's, it's better than it ever has been. Uh, and to, to the folks that disagree with me, you know, I would love to hear why uh, I, cause no, seriously, seriously. I, oh, no, I, I'm with you. I, it, it's funny. It just speaks one to of, one of the most we're looking one of, for people to argue with us. <laughs> one of the most powerful, Not things, arguing. <laughs> one of the most powerful things in this world is the, is the phrase, Huh. when you heard something <laughs> when you heard something you didn't expect or surprising yeah. right and yeah. uh, like like i know that there are people out there that listen to this show that listen to our show that probably aren't as pumped about 10th as i am and i want to hear about it because 
because right, it's good, y'all. It's good. I've I've done it. I've been to the GTs. I've been playing it. It's good. It's really fun. Uh, so so yeah, like 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 if 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 you are listening to the show and you're, you're like on the fence of like trying out a certain list or whatever, just just do it. You're gonna have, have fun. fun with it. Have it's fun easy. With yep. Right I'll, I'll keep my answer very short right. for this uh, and that I am no less excited for 40k than any of the other games that I'm playing and I'm very excited for all of them that's so, a good way to put like, it I love and, all my children um, equally exactly <laughs> um, the one thing I'll say though is like I do tend to hang out in like our specials game channel on our discord or something like that so I'm seeing more of the excitement for the games there and I'm seeing less of 40k in general so I would just say uh, my my challenge to the listeners especially in the Facebook group is like let's see more pictures of people playing games like show us some, mm. some in-game picks and what's going I on love, and like I love seeing I love the seeing excitement pictures. of a game being played yeah. like that and it's it's infectious we gotta so, yeah we got to start like a trend. S- I got an idea. We got to start a trend. I want to see, you see a lot of the pregame selfie, right? When you got somebody taking, taking the picture of them with the table between them, their opponent throwing up, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever. I want to see the pregame selfie and I want to see the postgame yeah. selfie. And I want to see I them actually, back to back. I actually was going to tell you, I actually like seeing photos. Like I love, I love seeing pictures, close ups of the models on the table. Cool. But I like seeing people playing. Like I like mm. seeing like the pictures of the people actually playing or being goofy around the table. Mm-hmm. And then you know, like I I really enjoy seeing the personality in, yeah. in the game as well as the game itself. Cam- so. Campbell's terrible in the post game selfie because he's so salty every single every time. Game. Well, it's uh, I'm salty. I'm also really sweaty because I Me flipped too. the table over. It's it's a whole thing. Yeah, it's so heavy. Well, you okay? You you joke around, but you do flip your oh. dice six feet in the oh, air. Yeah, every every die roll, it's like all right, I got a d six here. <laughs> it's yeah they, they gotta get from it from another game of me and together you, we're both just throwing dice off the table yeah. <laughs> you play listen if you dear listener if you ever play a game with campbell mclaughlin my erstwhile partner who i love so much put your hands shield your models from his dice rolls because them things are going to come down they're going to chip your paint they're going to knock that glue right off the model you got arms you got weapons you got bases flying everywhere it's chaos it's a good thing most of us are nerds that wear glasses. Yeah, you should that wear is required. Around Campbell. Okay, on that note, we got to wrap this segment up, Josh. So I don't let's, wear glasses. Let's, let's wrap it up. My eyes are you're great. Gonna, you're going to have to play in Campbell. Come over here. These <laughs> dice are sharp. <laughs> so we're going we're gonna to take a short break. Then we're going to come back. We're going to close out the show. Okay, and we're back. And we're we're gonna close out uh this to the finish. Oh my god. It went I'm this ready. Is a great episode. Let's like, go I, another three I, hours. I miss you guys so much. <laughs> like I, I, I'm so glad we did this because I really do miss the two of you yeah. guys very much. Well that's um, very nice of you to say, Carl. We miss dad. you too. I, I wanna thank you so- <laughs> I want to thank you guys so much for joining us. This has been super fun and and I appreciate you taking the time if you ever uh ever need us to spend time helping you guys out with something you you let us know and absolutely we'll, we'll be there so i have been a fan of the independent characters since about 2008 and this i am so incredibly honored to be on this show oh. like I, I i cannot tell you the impact that you uh and jeff and don and justin and josh have had on my hobby and on my life and awesome. i i am just in awe at this opportunity and I'm having so much fun and well, listen, I, we'll make it happen again. I tell you, I sure. tell you, Carl, and I tell you with, with full sincerity and earnestness, I love you and um, I want you to adopt me. <laughs> Get in line. Peace Dan. and love. Peace and love is, as, <laughs> I saw him dead as, as, as our friend, as our friend Doug used to say, peace and love, man. Peace I mean, and love. Uh, all right. Uh, so yeah, just cute, quick few final messages. Uh, we got, itunes uh you know reviews we could really use uh, we appreciate it's funny I, what was i telling you josh like i was looking at the reviews i looked at some guy in canada oh, like, <laughs> that will, it's like one of the latest reviews he left and he's like he's like the show's okay but carl's house crashed into my truck <laughs> five stars <laughs> which which yeah five stars which if you haven't listened like my house was hit by a truck at one point and took a year to get it fixed so um 
uh, we've got a Facebook group, which is is kicking off. We've got our Patreon, which uh, we super appreciate your support. Uh, you have the guests of the 40K Badcast. Honestly, the only other podcast I really listen to in regards to 40K stuff. Yep. So, um, wow. and, and I and I reach out to you guys. Like I reached out to Campbell about Necromunda at one point because I was like. I'm playing Goliath and I'm getting shot to hell. What do I do to stop it from happening? And yeah. Campbell gave me some great advice. So, so the last um, campaign I where, was where, arbitering, uh, hit up Dan for a bunch of uh, advice and feedback and got some good insights go. there from the man that makes the legend. So, so uh, where can people find you? And, and you guys have a Discord and, and everything. So tell tell us where people can locate you and listen to your... All right, go plugs. Campbell, go. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, 40kbadcast.com. That is the place to find us. But also we're on Spotify, iTunes, and also now YouTube because Dan is going through the effort of uploading our old backlog of episodes going back uh, seven years of... Yeah, we yeah of shows it. up there <laughs> uh so you can check it out on any of those platforms and i'm sure there's some other fly-by-night platform that'll probably give your computer a bunch of malware that we're on to but we're out there uh but if you <laughs> kazaa livewire yeah, you... <laughs> napster napster <laughs> 40k badcast.cz <laughs> oh no yeah 40k badcast.com that's the place if you are unfamiliar with our show please go there give us a listen uh we <clears throat> try very very hard to have fun with this hobby. Uh, we are not, we are like, we're, we try hard and have a, and try to have a good show and everything, but we're not tryhards when it comes to the game. We're just out here to have, to vibe and have a good time. Uh, and I think that the independent characters listeners will like it. I, I, I hope that they so. will. And minus I, your children. Yeah, it's just, unless your minus kids your are children. really cool. But yeah, we, we cuss a lot. We cuss <laughs> we do a lot. Say, we do say cusses on our show. We do. And yeah. I appreciate it's that been, you guys were able to remove it all. From yeah, it's, it's been hard. difficult. It's, it's been hard. difficult. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I've gotten to the point where it just, I turn it off. Because if you know, as you guys know me in person, in person. Oh, yeah. No, the first, you know, the I was first arm, time I swear you like, dropped yeah, an in person, which was like, hey, I met you like 15 minutes before. I was like, Blew your oh mind. my God. He's not just like, he's not the <laughs> Mr. Rogers guy. He's a human being. <laughs> oh my stars <laughs> but yes Goodness. but we we, we, we do couch. we do we do try to have a lot of fun and uh i'm particularly p- proud of the audio quality that goes in As our you show should be. because i am literally actually an audio engineer so if you want to listen to a show that that has a couple of couple of schmucks making some yucks and sounds good then we're and the if guys. If you want to give those you. schmucks who give you some yucks a couple of bucks, we have a Patreon, which is patreon.com slash 40 kbadcast which is how you get to our Discord. And we also sell merchandise that I design. That's something that I'm particularly proud of as a perpetually out of work graphic designer. And that's where they're exactly. storing bucks. <laughs> not, not anymore. <laughs> we're business geniuses over here at the 40K Badcast. <laughs> I'm not a CFA, but. <laughs> All right. Uh, so anyway, uh, until next time, this is Carl. This is Josh. This is Campbell. This is Dan. And we're coming to you from the Astronomicon where we really have to find more people that disagree with us on air. It's me. And where I'll come and disagree with you. If Dan and Campbell were a Blood Bowl star players, they would be known as Grip and Rip, and they would be a package <laughs> deal. <laughs> yes. Where we're yes. all Campbell. bad at 40K. And you can too. Yeah. All right. We'll catch you next time. This episode of The Independent Characters is protected by the Creative Commons license. If you have further questions as to its use, you can find information on the front page at theindependentcharacters.com.